I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll start with the reading of the agenda. We'll go over our August 15th regular meeting minutes. We'll then move on to community relations announcements in open forum. We'll then move to appointments and resignations, under which we have two items. We have a reappointment for the Conservation Commission, and we have an appointment for the Marijuana Advisory Committee. We have several scheduled appointments tonight. I have a 645 public hearing for a new liquor license for uh, Kaluka LLC. We have a 650 appointment for a poll hearing on North Sturbridge Road. We have a 7 o'clock appointment for a website with Ms. Westwell for our future plans and capabilities of the town's website. And we have a 7.30 appointment for the uh, 508 timeline. On a new business, we have another set of several items. Uh, item number one is the highway superintendent for an upgate, update on Boiling Game Road, Potter Village Road, and Gulfwood. Number two is the fire department for a staffing request. Number three is a site plan application for Coffee House. Item number four is a site plan application from Bay Path Regional Applicational Technical High School. Item number five is a special one-day liquor license request. Number six is a CMMPO information and member selection meeting. Number seven is to set the trick and treat date this year. Number eight is the department head a uniform and to talk about uniforms and licenses. Under old business, we have uh, Chief Charette to talk about Route 20 traffic. We have the Board of Selectmen's goals and, uh, goals and objectives. And then we have the special town meeting, which will be October 16th, to review draft warrants, close warrant, and review capital items, and refer to the Finance Committee. We'll then move on to committee reports, Board of Selectmen policy reviews, and then the <coughs> Town Administrator's report, and finally, other business unknown at the time of posting. Our next meeting will be September 26th, and we'll be going into executive session, and we'll be exiting executive session solely for the purpose of adjournment. With that, what are the board's wishes for August 15th regular meeting minutes? Through the chair. Mr. McGrath. I make a motion that we accept the August 15th minute, meeting minutes as printed. Second. Thank you. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair, let's say motion passes. Thank you. Now move on to announcements. There will be a household hazardous waste day on Saturday, September 30th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 165 Barefoot Road in Southridge, Massachusetts. A proof of residency will be required. Annual Forestry Chapter 61-61A, B, and C renewals are due by October 1st to the Board of Assessors. It's hurricane season. Be prepared. Be prepared for power outages, wind damages, and floods. Secure items that could be affected by wind and rain. With the flooding that occurred in Texas and the threat of Hurricane Irma, it is always best to be prepared in case of emergencies. There's information on the homepage at townofcharlton.net for MEMA Hurricanes page. And lastly, school is back in session, so please take an extra care to drive safely and watch for pedestrians. Is there any other announcements from the board? Just a question. Mr. Singer? As you brought up the hurricane season and be prepared. When I get like a text message on my phone about a... Could you speak, uh, bring the mic right to you, please? Just for the public's knowledge, I get a text message on my phone sent to me about a road closure in town or a road opening in town. Can we provide that's the public? You know, they have to opt into this system to get those calls or those text messages? I believe so. So can we put on the website maybe how they can go about opting in to get that? Absolutely. But I'm assuming that any of these things that may happen if there are instructions or road closures or whatever are going to come that way. Right. And it's it's just a benefit to the town, you know, citizens to be on the system and get a text message to know about these closures or emergencies. Absolutely. Ms. Graber, could we look at that, please? Thank you. I think some of them are up, but I'll double check. Are you talking about the mass alerts or are you talking about the ones that we send from here from Code Red? Um, honestly, I'm not sure who sent it. I think you mean I, I, I think, think it's the code red ones. Yeah, because it might have come ones. from us because it was specifically about our road closures in our yeah. town okay. and when we were reopening and closing the roads. Okay. And just a reminder for the board, if you can bring your microphones right up to you, we have having some issues uh, hearing us on the TV. Okay. And so at home. I will just say some of those um, code red when they um, let people know 
it may be they may take a, a geographical area okay. and send it out to those people. Okay. Um, so even if you signed up, you may not be on that piece. The sign up has been for more things like if we're doing uh, town meeting announcements and things like that. So. Um, what we can do is definitely make sure that if there is a code red that goes out, note, also put that notification on the website so everyone knows. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, I found another announcement. Uh, the Charlton Flu Clinic. Please uh, make sure to get your flu shot if you want to. Uh, you can at the Town Hall on Tuesday, October 10th uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Charlton Senior Center, 37 Main Street, Charlton, Mass. Please make sure to have all of your insurance cards with you. No insurance? No problem. Nobody will be refused a shot. All right. Is there any other announcements from the board? Is anyone here for open forum? Please come forward. Please make sure you speak right into the microphone. Uh, state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Judy Monica from 51 Jones Road in Charlton. And I just have a couple of quick um, questions. One is many years ago, I was a member of the board that studied uh, the deregionalization of the school committee in town. Mm -hmm. um, I think there were six or eight people on the panel, and it was quite a while ago. But it was really an easy task for us to examine all the aspects, financial aspects of deregionalization. And um, in six or eight, maybe six meetings or less, we had that data. And it was clear that it was a bad decision at that time. Um, it, it's many years later, so maybe looking at it again is not a bad idea. But I'm wondering about how the decision to hire a consultant was made and what the cost to the town of that consultant is when it was done um, so successfully in the past. Correct. Uh, if my memory serves correct. We are doing a current study of the school's financial system. Mm -hmm. So as we already have a company there, uh, we were just expanding the scope of that project. But I would ask Ms. Craver to supply further details on that. That's absolutely correct. And the board did decide to hold off on that until mm -hmm. we are having a, a very big financial meeting um, report on the 19th with okay, the school system, the town of Dudley, and um, officials from Charlton. So they'll be going over all the financial data. We're preparing um, forecasts, revenue forecasts. So this board has agreed to hold off on that um, because there's a wide, as you know, there's a wide variety of um, in-depth, how in-depth they go. So it could be as much as just a, a bird's eye view of their report for $3,000 or um, they just did a um, study in Dennis for 30000 So this board's got to really look at the, um, the scope and see what level they want to look at. And so I just want to reiterate that, you know, the town obviously and this board are, are not taking any actions on this. We're not, you know, moving to devisualize. Just something that, you know, was brought up and just good information for us to have mm -hmm. and to be able to answer questions that will inevitably come up, you know, with all these irons in the fire being able to be, you know, have this information provided people just make us all, you know, aware of what's going on. So I just want to make sure I understand then as part of the discussion, um, perhaps going back to a volunteer committee to look, this is the data and the information is publicly available through a little research, um, you know, how, how transportation costs are funded, uh, what the administrative cost differences would be. It, it's not, it's not high level material and I wonder if we would at least consider saving some money by starting in that direction. Um, and it, it kind of dovetails into my next question, which is about the um, last town meeting in the spring and discussion about Proposition 2 and a half override. And I know that at that time, Rick um, Swenson, you mentioned how important that was for us to be thinking about in advance before it even gets on the ballot. Um, so I'm not sure when it, do you have it, a date for when it would be brought to the town? That. Uh. Mr. McGrath, you want to speak on that? Sure. Um, basically, the reason we asked to have uh, Mr. Abrams do the, do the uh, financial review of the school system is to lay the groundwork to do that, OK? Mm -hmm. First, we have to understand how much money is coming into the school system and where it's going out, you know, where it goes out to, what are mandatory not, what is mandatory mm -hmm. spending by the state, what funding was, was once provided by the state for, man, for something that they mandated and what, what they've pulled the funding away from, uh, such as transportation. One of the benefits of, of having a regional school um, district was that they would fund 100% of the transportation. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to ask the members of this board when they've last seen the state fund transportation at 100%. Okay. 
Um, have they? Yeah, they, 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 they so, you know, that's all the stuff that we're, that we're, that we want to look at and we're just laying the groundwork for, for the Springtown meeting. Um, we're going to have to really educate the, you know, the, the citizens as to why we want to move forward with this. It's very hard to do and we want to work with the school committee, you know, on this. Absolutely. And schools, you know, as a, somebody who benefited from a quality education for my kids years ago in town, I'm, I feel like that's a great mission for us to have and to continue. And I'm in full support of supporting the schools. Um, but it's also supporting many of the other departments in town. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, uh, is, there a, is there a committee together that's, that's being formed? Not that it would be your responsibility, I'm just curious if you've heard about it, to um, educate people on what a Proposition 2 and a half means and how a town would go about passing that. Has anyone heard of anything? Not to my knowledge, but I think this, this meeting on the 19th is a natural kickoff point for that discussion. I imagine that will be brought up and uh, it has something has been discussed. But Ms. Graber, do you want to add something? No, that was what I was going to add. Okay. And, Mr. McGrath? And one, one of the other things, I know there was a lot of consternation about the board's decision to look into the deregionalization of the, of the schools. My re main reason for doing that is so that we have the data that we need when we do go for a Proposition 2 and a half override that when somebody stands up at the microphone at town meeting and said, well, did you guys study to see if it, is it going to be cheaper for us to have our own school system in the town of Charlton, or is it cheaper to have, you know, a regionalized school system? You know, did you study it? Yes. Here's the pros and here's the cons, and here's why we say, you know, why we're going for the Prop 2 and a half override. That was my reason for doing that. Absolutely. My question was more based on the, the financials. Again, looking at sp how our town spends money, do we need to spend between three and $30,000 to have that study done, or can we depend on some of the expertise in town in a volunteer way to gather the data? I don't know the answer to that question. I just think it's important for us to consider. Mr. Swanson? Judy, did you remember when that committee? I wish I did, Rick, but I'm too old to remember how many years ago it was. Because I, I, I would. You were on it, right? Were what's you that? On it? No, I, I wasn't on it, and, and I, I'd like to. I, I wasn't aware of it, to be honest with you. So I'd like to see if we could find that report. And I had called the finance. Take um, a look. The director of finance at the schools to let them know it was done to see if they could find it. Um, my children are in their 30s, and I did it when they were, you know, school, school age. So yeah. it's I'm thinking probably 20 years ago. Um, but it could still be valuable information for us mm -hmm. to look at, to take it with the whole process. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Mr. Singer, part of the reason we that. wanted to do the study was, as I was told, the last time the town actually paid to have the study done was 30 years ago. So that data is no longer viable in any way, shape, or form. Um, I want to know, similar to Mr. McGrath, if the town is going to be asked, and, and here's the thing, we had this conversation, and <coughs> I'm surprised that some people were shocked because we didn't just have this, start having this conversation. Mm -hmm. This conversation has been going on with this board maybe more than 10 years. And to be able to be shocked that they haven't heard of this before is a little crazy. Um, and it's been lingering and lingering, and the conversation's going on and on and on. And it's getting to a point where if we're going to be looking at even the possibility of a Prop 2.5 override, then we have to have the, the data, A, to say, you know what, we need it for this reason, don't de-regionalize. Or we need it for this reason, because we have to de-regionalize. You know, there's a lot of comments out there that are incorrect information, outdated information. We'd like to have current information. Our goal is, is twofold, I think, as a board. What's best for the town, the taxpayers, what's best for the children, education. So if that boils down to staying regionalized, the private studies will tell us that. If that boils down to leaving the, the regionalization, this will tell us that also. We have to look not just at tomorrow, but five or 10 years down the road. What are the population forecasts for five or 10 years from now? What's it gonna cost us five or 10 years from now to keep Shepherd Hill? From what I'm told, that could be $50 million in rehab. You, I mean, at, at what point do you say, what's best for the taxpayers and the children of Charlton? And again, I just wanna be clear, my question was whether we can do this without hiring a consultant. You know, um, and I think that's just worth discussing. I, a lot of yeah. people in town. Uh, if that report that. that you guys did more recently is available, I'd love to see it. I wish all that. I know is the 30-year-old data, which we can't really use. Mm -hmm. So if there's something more more recent, 
I'd love to have it. It's definitely more recent than 30 years old, because I'm old, but not that old. <laughs> Mrs. Swenson? <laughs> I, I was just going to say, it, it, part of this meeting that we're going to have that we're talking about here, I, I think part of that discussion will be, could we do this? Mm. And you know, I, volunteer committee is I can purpose. offer, I, I was trying to remember all the names, but Mark Darling was on the committee, um, Susan Smith Scott, Judy Butler. Um, you know, you are dating yourself. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, if any of those, I would, I would like to think the school department themselves might be able to get their hands on it. But Absolutely. And it's I, great, I, I think. I, I've made a note to take a look for it. So okay. that's, I believe, I mean, Thank next you. week. So uh, I, obviously, I please encourage you to attend. Um, and obviously, going from there, uh, next meeting, anything that comes to that meeting will be on that uh, on our next meeting's agenda. And again, as far as the proposition two and a half goes, and this will be my last um, statement, I want to be clear: it's not just about the schools. I'm also a business owner in town, and you know, I rely on the fire department, the police department, the highway department. Mm -hmm. So I really want us to work together, as opposed to pit departments against each other. For the Thank money. you so much. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say that that's really nice to hear, because as you're aware. With this board, we have to look at the whole picture and a finite amount of money. And all too often, what we hear from the outside is this slice, this slice, or this slice, regardless of the damage that's going to cause to the other slices. Well, I think that's why the discussion about the two and a half override is so important and for people to realize that if we're not willing to fund our town better, we won't be able to have the services that we need. So. Or at least consider the big picture. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, so just in a uh, few minutes of time for our schedule appointments, we'll come back to Open Forum. I know there's some people here for Open Forum, but I just want to make sure we get to our uh, fair schedule appointment, and we can take that up as we go. If, if, uh, does anyone have any objections to that? No. Seeing none, we'll move to our first item under appointments and resignations. Uh, this should move pretty uh, quickly. Uh, reappointment for the Conservation Commission. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. Attaches a request from Leonard Cardinal to be reappointed to the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission would recommend the board make the reappointment as requested. The term of the appointment would be until June 30th, 2020. I would recommend that the board make the appointment. Thank you. So moved. Board wishes. Thank you. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Triple time, motion passes. Thank you. Item number two, an appointment for the Marijuana Advisory Committee. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. At your last meeting, the board established a Marijuana Advisory Committee consisting of a bo the Board of Health Director, the Chief of Police, Fire Chief, Ms. Noble as the Board of Selectmen member, Mr. McGrath as the alternate Board of Selectmen member, and one citizen. We advertised for one citizen and received one request from Jamie Leahy, who will be present, who is at this meeting. Um, should the board have any questions? And we'd like to thank Ms. her. Ms. Leahy, come on up. For applying. Yes. Thank you for stepping forward. If you just want to state your name uh, and address just for the record, please. Uh, Jamie Leahy for Henry Richards Circle, Charlton. Thank you. Thank you. And did the board, do you have any, any questions for Ms. Uh, Leahy? I just do. thank you for stepping up. Sure. I have a couple of questions. Hi. Hi. Just move the microphone. Thank you. You're welcome. What's your background, Jamie? So uh, I work um, as a director of analytics at Reliant Medical Group. Mm -hmm. I've been there for 10 years. Okay. I've been in Charlton for four years. I grew up in Hardwick, Massachusetts. Um, I went to UMass Amherst for my, gra my undergrad. I went to Clark and Worcester for my grad school. So I'm pretty local to the area. Um, I like the outdoors. <laughs> pretty boring. Which, <laughs> what's your interest in being on this commission? Um, I, you know, I plan on being in Charlton for a long time, and I mm -hmm. think that this is a pretty hot topic at the moment, and it won't go away. And I'd like to be at the table for these discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions, or the board? Yes, Mr. Swenson. What instrument do you play? Oh, I play the flute. Okay. I, play in a, I play in a band. <laughs> you never know. He's always looking for band members. That's right. <laughs> uh, any more questions? Or does the board wish to move in any particular direction? Uh, through the chair. Mr. McGrath. I make a motion that we uh, appoint Jamie Leahy to the Marijuana Advisory Committee. Second. second. Thank you. Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Hi. 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 Motion passes. Thank you so much for stepping up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll go to our uh, first.
schedule appointment for 6.5 for a public hearing for a new liquor license from Kaluka LLC, Ms. Graver? Yes, sir. Attached is a request from Kaluka LLC, DBA Swifties Liquor Mart for a package store, all light alcohol beverages to be located at 280 Southbridge Road, Charlton, on one floor in a 1,200 1, square foot building. All the necessary paperwork has been completed for the board to review. The fire and police departments have given approval. The building commissioner, um, Meskus, is working with them on the floor plan. The board must review the application and give approval to move forward to the ABCC for final approval. Once the ABCC returns approval, the applicant will need to meet the requirements of the building commissioner before a license is issued. <coughs> Today we received updated information on the hours of operation, which will be Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We have also received an updated floor plan that was sent to Building Commissioner Meskis to review upon his return from vacation. The Chairman should open the public hearing by reading the notice as placed in the paper and sent to the abutters. And I will do so now. Thank you, Ms. Graver. A public hearing notice. The Charlton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 12, 2017 at 6.45 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 37 Main Street, Charlton, Mass. To act on a request for a package store slash all alcohol beverages to be held by Kaluka LLC doing business as Swifties Liquor Mart, located at 280 Southbridge Road in Charlton, Mass on one floor in a 1,200 square foot building. Anyone wishing to be heard on this matter should appear on a date and time specified or submit any concerns in writing to the Charlton Board of Selectmen. And I will declare the public hearing open at 6.51 p.m. Ms. Graver, did we, did we, did we receive any, uh, uh, anything in writing? No, sir. Yes, sir. Is anyone here for the open forum, uh, for, for the public hearing? Mr. Chairman, good evening. Sir, can you um, say your name and address for the record? My name is attorney Robert Hennigan, and I'm an attorney from Worcester that represents Kaluka uh, Lim uh, LLC, a limited liability uh, company. With me this evening, uh, and I'll be happy to bring them up for you if you would, uh, is Ms. Tarango Agua uh, and Al uh, Ayala. Uh, who I will tell you who will be involved in, in the operation of this, and with me also is Mr. Mankiti, Ifiani Mankiti, who will be the owner of this particular building. And I thought I'd bring him in and let you meet them so that you could understand uh, who's going to be doing what. The plan as it's presented is that um, <clears throat> Mr. Mankiti will purchase this property uh, from the present owner for $170,000. There will be no financing of that. That will be financed through his own. We've provided the financial documents and, rec and records. Um, uh, Tarango will be the uh, owner. She is the owner of the LLC. She is a single member and sole manager of the LLC. And <coughs> Al, who we call Al A Ayala, will be the uh, manager of that particular property. Both have experience in operating a uh, package store. They operated a package store at Forest Hills Park in Jamaica Plains for uh, a few years. Um, and uh, <coughs> Tarango is presently the manager of Moynihan's Pub in Worcester. Mr. Mankiti purchased that building and arrangements were made through LLC corporations, at, at, for, with, which, which Tarango was involved in, to operate uh, Moynihan's Pub, um, which perhaps the young lady who was here before from Clark University is familiar with because it's right across from Clark University. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> and I say that only because they have a sensitivity, uh, these people, to the operation of a liquor store and, and, uh, and facilities serving liquor in terms of uh, dealing with minors. And I just wanted to bring that up to the board that there was that experience. Um, Mr. Mankiti, just for your background, is a uh, developer in Worcester and has been for, for many, many, for, for three years or so. But he's also a retired uh, philosophy professor from Wesley College. Mm -hmm. And if you want to sit and discuss uh, Aristotle or Plato, then prepare for a long evening because you'll be uh, talking to him for a long period of time. Uh, but he is a very active member right now in the development picture in the city of Worcester and apparently uh, interested in doing some development work here in the town of Charlton. Mm -hmm. Uh, we believe we've laid out everything we can. We did have a little layout problem in terms of the floor plan, which we think we've resolved, which I understand has to be reviewed still by the building commissioner. Uh, and we also realize that we do have, a, if it was to be approved, some, some work in terms of signage in the Department of Public Health. Um, the idea would be that the sale date would take place within 10 days of approval from the ABCC 
which whatever that date will be, we would move very, very quickly. So Mr. Chairman, unless you have some questions about any of these individuals, um, <clears throat> that would be the conclu uh, conclusion of my comments. Thank you, Attorney Hannigan. I, I appreciate it. Is there uh, any questions from the board or is uh, Mr. Swenson? I, I just noticed it says on here that um, uh, the, the hours of operation, which would be Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., I was under the impression that our town bylaws didn't permit the selling of liquor be after 9 or 10 p.m. Do we know if that's the case? Am I mistaken on that? I'm not familiar. Well, let me, I can take a look. But yeah, I mean, we clearly we would, we would conform to whatever the bylaw is. Okay. We, I think we thought it was operated on the previous owners at that period of time, at least that's the information we had. But okay. clearly, whatever the bylaw allows is what we would operate. Okay. So we'll, fit, we'll amend that before it goes. Yeah, I, I, to, uh, I, 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 I believe it, it's 9 or 10 for liquor sales. I, but again, I, I could be mistaken, but I'd just like That's to clarify that. Mr. McGrath? Yeah, what, uh, Attorney Hennigan, what was there previously? Was it a uh, package? It was a liquor store, as my knowledge. Okay. It was uh, CNS, uh, liquor, CNS, CNS okay. Liquor Mart, no, I which believe. One is and there is no change to the interior layout or, or the out exterior. It's okay. uh, nothing is really going to change. Change to your it. ownership, basically. It's just basically a change of ownership, correct. Okay. Is there anyone here for the public hearing? Well, I'm not, I'm not here for the public hearing. I'm here for other things. But I would just I would, I would just like to make a comment at this point is that um, I appreciate what you said about your, your clients. Uh, Commitment to minors not serving of alcohol, to selling to minors and all of that. And I just, we have had one or two instances in town before that has come up. And I just would like to state for the record that we as a board do take that extremely seriously, extremely seriously. Um, so I would just, you know, we're not trying to discourage business. We welcome you. We're glad that you want to come to our town and do business in our, run your business in our town. But when it's this type of business, I just personally like to be very clear uh, on that front. Thank you. Mr. McGrath? And, and just a uh, heads up, um, one, of the, uh, one of the businesses that we had a problem with, <clears throat> what would happen is the miners would come in with the, with the false ID, and he was taking the ID and keeping it instead of contacting the police department. A anything like that, please contact the police department so that we can involve them. Um, and see, you know, see what, what is going on. The chief's right at the back of the room, always willing to help. Yeah, that instance, he came in with a binder filled with pages of <laughs> pages that he could. So, well, th thank you, Mr. Ch I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Swenson? I would, I would just uh, like to move that we approve the request uh, from Kaluka LLC, DBA Swifties Liquor Mart, for the license uh, pending uh, final review by the building commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Motion and a second. Discussion? Ms. Noble? Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I think Ms. Noble has something. To say. I think we have to close the public hearing. Oh, I'm first. sorry. That's right. Oh, before we, yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't take a motion to close the public chair. hearing. Mr. McGrath. I make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Any motion and a second? Any discussion? No one's here for the public hearing. All right, seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion to close the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Chair Batsai, motion passes. The hearing is now closed at 6.58. Now I will restate my motion that we approve the license request for a Kaluka LLC, DBA Swifties, like a mark. Second. Thank you. Motion is second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Chair Batsai, motion passes. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, and thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yep. Well, Ms. Craig, your office was extremely helpful. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want you to revisit uh, the, the open, um, open forum again. I know that I said we'd come back to it. So is anyone here for open forum? Sir? Good evening. My name is David Smolsky. My family and I live at 189 Center Depot Road here in town. And I want to start off by thanking uh, members of the board for your email correspondence to me over the past few weeks. Uh, we've been communicating about a speeding problem on our streets in our depot road. Uh, definitely appreciate the, uh, the attention that you've given me so far. And um, I wanted to also mention I did notice an inc increased police presence during the first week of school. So very much appreciated um, also to, to Chief Charette. And, um, I, I noticed that in some of my communication with the chief, he mentioned that there's 
Nothing more effective than continuous law enforcement. I think law enforcement is absolutely important in a situation like this. Speeding relates to safety. I don't think, though, that it's the only solution. I, I would imagine, I'm not an expert on this, but I think there's probably multiple things that need to be considered. Um, I know that uh, Robin Craver was going to get with the chief um, offline to discuss potential solutions, ideas, things like that. I thought I'd just stop by the meeting tonight and ask for a timeline, get an idea of, uh, you know, really when to expect to, uh, to visit the topic and, and make it more of a public discussion. Chief? Like. <laughs> <laughs> through, through the chair. Mr. McGrath? Uh, Chief, just a quick question. The, the speed board that we have, uh, what kind of data does it gather? The one we use is pretty basic. It, uh, it will give the, the speed you're traveling, what the speed should be. It'll flash you if you're going beyond that. Um, I, I really look forward to to sit down and, and discuss the future concerns with all the traffic. Um, uh, very quickly, it's on the agenda later, but as we've all seen, it's exploded. Uh, I think there's a lot of work to be done with it. And uh, what, what I meant by the ongoing process is uh, we recently had a business open on Route 20. Uh, I spoke with half a dozen of the state engineers, and they're great. They come down, they give you their thoughts, what they can do. And I think that's got to be an ongoing, literally, probably quarterly meeting, uh, the way that uh, the community of Charlton integrates so closely with the Mass Pike and, and other things. I think there's, there's a well knowledge there. That because between the, the applications on smartphones <laughs> moving people around, uh, the constant heavy, heavy volume on the Mass Pike, and, uh, and the increase in, in the community itself. Uh, so you put all those together, and I think it, it should be a discussion that's literally ongoing, not something we can visit today and forget about. Sure. This, this, has to, this has to continue and continue. Okay. That's good. I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that. Um, and, and Chief, you've been very helpful oh, when it comes to the topic. Uh, when I saw that there were a couple of different traffic-related items on the agenda, I figured, you know what, it's front and center. It would be good to, uh, to show my, myself here at the meeting. And uh, I mentioned in one of those emails, um, I'd like to be able to be, you know, contribute in some way, part of the solution. I don't intend just to be a squeaky wheel. I'm not here to be uh, a troublemaker, but I'm very concerned about the safety of, you know, people in our town, front and center on my road in front of my, my house, um, and it, it's a topic that I'm passionate about. I see, uh, uh, Mr. McGrath? Through, through the chair, Chief, um, maybe if we talk with D3, um, there's several, uh, several boards that yes. capture, capture matrix, metrics rather. You can also log into them and look at it real, you know, live time. They also have a camera on them. So if you have somebody that's, you know, at 8.05 to 8.10 is doing 65 miles an hour going by the board, you can actually snap a picture of them. Yeah. So um, yeah. maybe, you, I'll, I'll talk to you a little later on, maybe we can borrow one for a little while. That would be a great, and, a great uh, asset. We can yes. get some metrics on what's actually Thank happening you. out there. Starts around 4.45 a.m. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mr. Swenson. Chief, I have to rely on your expertise in this. I've seen it in town a few times. When, the first one that popped to my mind is when we had the, the accident on the, on the town line on Route 20. Um, for a while, the state police would be set up a trap uh, right, at the, right at the crest of that hill by the Mark Meacham building, and it was effective. Um, but then after a while, they weren't there so much anymore, and things kind of go back to the way they were. And, 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 I, and I, yeah, I'm, my concern would be, I'm glad that we're addressing the issue, but my concern would be the same thing happens. We're there for a while, then other priorities come up and things move, and things revert back to the way they were. Are, are there ways in your experience of, of if you establish, make establish there that, that you're going to be watching and, and if we get traffic to slow down that it can be maintained at that level. A absolutely. Uh, and that is exactly what I meant by the ongoing process. Okay. Um, pretty much to cover the agenda item before it gets there. I would, I would suggest to the board to consider a civilian traffic commission. We used to do that and we met monthly. Uh, anybody who had any kind of concern had a sounding board and a blackboard to put that on. 
we would review that. We had the assistance of state agencies to do exactly what Selectman McGrath mentioned. And, and it was a great way to make sure that we were addressing these things monthly. And, and absolutely with the help of the select board, but in this way, we were not just bringing them a concern, we were bringing them a solution. So when these different concerns came up, when developments came up, all of these things that are, you're really growing in many ways, and, and so is the traffic, I, I think it would be a great addition for your community to have this kind of a, a, a committee together so that they could stop bringing you those solutions. And, and as you said, it's not all enforcement. Sometimes it's traffic calming, sometimes it's signs. Sometimes it's getting rid of signs. When you have so many, nobody pays attention anymore. So uh, I, I think it may be a, a good consideration in the near future for Absolutely. And just, just for, for timing's sake, uh, we have a couple of scheduled appointments we're falling behind on. Sure. I appreciate you know, uh, uh, Mrs. Smolsky for coming forward. Uh, and I know we're going to revisit this later on tonight for Route 20. We can continue that discussion sure. then and uh, possibly at a future meeting. So. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'll do, this. do you have a uh, pardon comment? Just, just very quickly. Um, the idea of a civilian traffic commission sounds absolutely ideal for the issues that Charlton is currently facing. So I'd like to know, um, can I contact you about this so we can um, perhaps sure. explore, explore it further? Yeah, and we can see, discuss this later on tonight. And we can, we can discuss it later on tonight, yeah, good, because I think that's this. actually ideal. and That's exactly what we need to do right now at this point in Charlton. So thank you. So, and thank so you for coming forward, Mr. Smolsky. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else here for open forum? Mr. Coleman? Mr. Chairman, I, I know you're running behind. If um, one of the items that I had actually involved the website, so yep. I, I'll hold off on that. But if, if you could um, just get me in before new business, yep. uh, I'll, I'll let you. you is know. it okay uh, if, uh, if we have time before, before a 7.30 appointment? That, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you. I appreciate no you problem. being uh, understanding. Um, with that, uh, we will, uh, is anyone else here for open forum? All right. We'll now move on to our 650 appointment for a poll hearing on North Sturbridge Road. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. Attached, you'll find a request from National Grid seeking to install one SO pole on North Sturbridge Road. Also attached is the notice that was sent to abutters. This request has been forwarded and approved by both Chief of Police and Highway Superintendent. The chairman should open the public hearing by reading the notice as sent to the abutter. Thank you, and I will do so now. A public hearing notice. The Charlton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 12, 2017, at 6.50 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room at 37 Main Street, Charlton, Mass., 01507, to act on a request from National Grid seeking permission to locate poles, wires, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way. North Sturbridge Road. National Grid to install one SO pole on North Sturbridge Road beginning at a point approximately 40 feet west of the center line of the intersection of Osgood Road. National Grid to install new SO pole 40-50 for tap to DG interconnection. Anyone wishing to be heard on this matter should appear on the date and time specified or submit any concerns in writing. I'll declare that the public hearing open at 7.07 p.m. Ms. Craver, did we receive any concerns in writing? No, sir. Is there anyone here for this public hearing? Uh, yes. Uh, Sir, could you please say your name and your affiliation for the record? Uh, Steve Susi, uh, um, work for National Grid, and uh, we're installing this pole um, for a 500 kilowatt uh, solar generation field. So from this pole, we'll have other poles going on to the private property, which is listed as uh, 134 Cranberry Meadow Road. It's between 122 and 120 North Sturbridge Road, the driveway to get into where the solar generation panels are is already in, and they're already starting work on that. Um, but that is what it's for. It's for a pole, and from that, we'll transfer the existing primary wires onto that, um, that are for the street, and connect the, uh, the solar generation. Thank you. Is there anyone here for this public hearing? Through the okay. chair. Mr. McGrath. Make a motion we close the public hearing, please. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close. Second. Any motion to second? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to close, please say aye. Aye. Chair, let's sign. Motion passes. The public hearing is now closed at 7.08 p.m. Is there, uh, what is your board's wishes? Through the chair. Mr. McGrath. I make a motion that we uh, approve National Grid's proposal to install one SO pole on North Sturbridge Road beginning at a point approximately 40 feet west of the center line of the intersection of Osgood Road 
National Grid to install new SO pole 40-50 for TAP to GG, DG interconnection. Thank you. A motion. Do you have a second? Yes. A motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice night. You as well. All right, we'll now move on to our 7 o'clock appointment for a website for future plans and capabilities with Ms. Westwell. Thank you for being patient as we're uh, a few minutes behind. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. At the board's last meeting while reviewing the board's goals and objectives, one of the items was to create a new town website and invite our webmaster to meet with the board to discuss future plans and capabilities and to increase website and social media presence. Lisa is here for the discussion. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Westwell. Thank this, you. This, stemmed, uh, this has been um, one of my personal objectives, and I think Ms. Ms. Nobles as well. Uh, mine for a couple of years, Ms. Nobles uh, obviously for this year. Uh, just talking, you know, seeing what we can do uh, to really bring the website to, you know, 2017 to uh, allow uh, better access, to allow, you know, be more streamlined, and be able to, you know, have it uh, function uh, in a way that will help everyone um, in a very uh, easy manner. That makes sense. So I guess w what I'm thinking is for an overhaul of the website, just for um, usability, what are your thoughts on that? That's up to what the town's looking for. I mean, this site's been redesigned, I think, twice. I've been doing it since 2001. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm self-taught, so I said a few years ago, at some point, you're probably going to want to move to somebody who's, you know, can design mobile-friendly and and things like that, and I'm I'm not trained for that. This, the sites that I do are all very simple. So if you're, you know, if you're looking for mobile-friendly and databases and emails and things like that, then, you know, you'd have to find somebody else. So I'm, I don't really know what you're looking for. I asked prior to this meeting to kind of get an idea what what you were looking for so I could be prepared. Yeah, uh, and so uh, I, <laughs> this, is just, this is just to start the discussion of going forward, this being proactive. I know uh, uh, people have, um, you know, uh, yeah, using it more, and you know, as a, reach, a wider audience, being able to make sure we, we can handle that, and you know, and one of our major goals is to be transparent and to be uh, able to offer all the information that we you know that we can to everyone, and that can be accessed easily. Miss Noble. Hi, Lisa. Hi. So, um, what one of the issues and one of the concerns I have with the website is that it's not as user friendly as I've seen at some other town websites, forms. People have to download them, fill them out, scan them, send them in. They're not interactive enough. People can't simply fill out a form on the website, hit submit, and have it go where they want it to. I'm also concerned that people aren't communicating with you well enough to simply update information. Um, for example, Old Home Day that we just had, which was a fantastic event. The information on the website, a lot of it, was from 2016. So that lets me know that people aren't communicating well enough with you so that you even have the ability to put current data and current information up there. So you have more of an expertise in the field than I do. What, what do you think we need to do to bring ourselves up a level? You said it had only been redesigned, you said maybe twice since yeah, 2001. The, the format's always pretty much been the same because, like I said, I'm, I'm self-taught. I've never been shy about what, what platform do you use? I use a, a mishmash of HTML and CSS. I design okay. a Dreamweaver. Mm -hmm. I try to make sure everybody can get where they need to be in two clicks. Okay. Um, you're right. PDF forms um, probably could be done over email. The town would have to send them to me, fillable and okay. appropriate for submission. Mm -hmm. As far as... Um, We've tried to use forms before and had right. issues with them, and I, you know, you you need some kind of server to do it. I don't, okay. I don't know how to do it. I've never been shy about saying that either. Mm -hmm. And as far as content, it is 100% department responsibility to send me updates. Right. So if I, if I unless I occasionally will see things posted elsewhere and I'll grab it and throw mm -hmm. it on the site myself, but it's primarily always been up to every department to send me what they want posted, what needs to come off, what's old, what's outdated, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And it, there's a lot of stuff on the site that I probably would take off. There's yes. a lot of old stuff on mm -hmm. there. There's a lot of there's a lot of 2009 there. minutes mm -hmm. uh, things yeah. that are really, really old and probably, you know, I almost feel sometimes like there's too much content. Yes. 
too and, confusing? And it's great, but it's it's uh, it becomes difficult to find things after a while mm -hmm. because you lose track of where things are. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and, and like Mr. Craver said, this is just one facet to being able to develop a you know I think a comprehensive policy. How do we want to present this to the public? What do we want made available, and how we want it made available? I think. You know, uh, accessibility is just as important as information is. It is, and the you know, where do I go for a page was was a nice addition that, that I'm not sure who came up. It came from Robin's office, but I don't know who thought of it. Someone saw it on another site. We threw it up there, and they helped me get together what they wanted on there. But mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty much unless it's given to me, it's not doesn't really right. get posted. I, I know on other websites. Um, some departments actually are, have the ability to log into their own part of the website and mm -hmm. upload the documents and change information themselves instead of having to, uh, you know, I, I imagine it's pretty uh, you know, hectic at some points if everyone's emailing you all these different things. I've been doing it for a long time. Right, but uh, to, to piggyback on what, on what uh, the chairman was saying, is it possible, is it feasible, is it sensible in your opinion that the different departments have access to their own pages they on the can, website. They can, but not with me. I don't offer a control panel. Okay. I do the, I do custom mm -hmm. stuff, so I don't have a way. My experience has been if you if you don't have things set up in proper templates that people can't change, mm -hmm. there's too many things that can be changed and then need to be corrected. Okay. If the departments want to be able to post their own stuff, then you know I've I've said probably three years ago to to the board at some point you're going to need to look at, not me, whether it's virtual town hall, whether it's another web designer that's, you know, I mean, my skills are, they are what they are. It's worked so far. I try to right. make it accessible, but I've never been shy about saying, man, at some point, you're probably going to want to find somebody that can do more than I can do, and which is fine, like email yeah. signups. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the issue becomes the pages are already outdated. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have your departments log in and update their own pages, are they? Right. That's true. I don't exactly. know. And, and, Some and, departments are really, really good about sending me stuff mm -hmm. and sending me updates and keeping their stuff current and posting minutes. Other departments, meh, I don't hear from them at all. So, okay. you know, that's not really in my control. But So then we need to come up with a real cohesive, comprehensive plan to bring our website into 2017, make it transparent for the public and user-friendly for not only the public, but for the staff as well. Yeah, I mean, it's as transparent as it can get. There's nothing. Okay. I mean, pretty much everything gets posted. It, it is, but I guess I, I would say, because it's difficult for people to access, that, that limits the transparency. What's difficult to access? Sometimes you have to click on, you have to <coughs> go through a lot to get to where you want to be. You have to click and click and click. I would say, like I think you mentioned earlier, Ms. Westwell, you know, having too much information, yeah. being able to go through yeah. that, just, you know, it's there, but how does someone who's like just, you know, looking for it quick or is not familiar with the website or maybe not familiar exactly what they're looking for to be able to, exact, uh, to uh, access what they exactly need? So, yeah. uh, Mr. Coleman? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the timing on this was good because actually one of the things that I was coming uh, tonight uh, was to actually talk about cable television, but it, it does tie into the, uh, to the website. Uh, first, I want to say that at the time when the town's website uh, and Mrs. Westwell got involved in the early 2000s, I was a town employee here working for the fire department, and part of my roles was um, I actually supplied the very first information that was posted on the website you know, back then. Uh, Mrs. Westwell has done uh, an outstanding job managing the town's website uh, for a lot of years um, on really a, uh, I'm not even going to call it a shoestring budget. It might actually be, just be the little it's plastic the piece at the end of the shoelace. Um, I am 100% in favor of technology. Technology advances. Um, the one thing that just everybody needs to understand including this board, and I'm not saying that it is lost on you, but all of the things that you're talking about cost money. Right. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's, it's a capital expense. Yes. And uh, just a capital. as a member of the, the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, I recently just served as the chairman of the website committee, and FCAM uh, just this year uh, put a new website online. Uh, that was a two-year project. 
vetting different vendors, exploring websites. Uh, and we, at the time, we interviewed a total of six vendors, and the price was unbelievable in terms of the ranges. We had companies that were a little more municipal friendly that were around the $10,000 uh, build price right up to $100,000. So it's like anything you purchase. There's a range. It depends on what you're looking for. I don't think that uh, anything that, that was discussed at the board tonight is unreasonable. Uh, those are all things that are on every website that you go to on any business on every, on every given day. Um, but, you know, we, we just, we all have to understand that, and I don't think that there's anybody individually that you could walk up to in this community and say, hey, is this the expectation of our website? And everybody would say yes. But we just need to be prepared that um, we're going to have to do something that we've never done before, which is pay for a website and pay for somebody to manage a website. In the very beginning, someone mentioned social media and social media activity. That's great. No one is more social media uh, friendly or pro-social media than me. But again, that's an endeavor that has to be um, thought about before I jumped into because, yeah, it's great. You can go open a page. Who's managing the page? Who's posting the content? Who's updating the content? Um, there's a, this is a lot of discussion for committee level type stuff. I will just say this only because it was mentioned. Is the capability of the for individual departments to go in and manage their own pages? Yes. Would I recommend that? No. There needs to be a vetting, there needs to be a clearinghouse for the content because at the end of the day, individual departments don't operate in silos. The town of Charlton is the name that's at the top and if the information that's posted on the site is not appropriate, uh, correct, uh, you're, the, you're the ones that are going to hear it. So. There needs to be a clearinghouse for content that goes on a website. So the technology exists. It co it's there. It costs money to do it, but it may not be the best policy or practice just to ease the burden mm. of whoever the webmaster is going to be to put the content on there. Absolutely. And, that, and like I said, this is just to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in a serious matter, I guess we should be doing something that's something we should be looking at. And that, you know, I personally heard from a lot of people about, you know, about getting information out there more, about being able to connect with social media. Uh, it's not me wanting to say, this is what Charlton's doing, is people saying, the way I live my life now, and it's just, you know, people fall all different age ranges saying, you know, it would be great to know about what Charlton's doing, mm -hmm. and, you know, and how they can be involved or what they, what's going to be happening to them. I, I agree with, with Mrs. Westwell that I think that short of going out and spending, you know, money today to build a new website, I think that there are some things that can be done today that would make the website better hmm. and, and easier just in terms of, and I agree with her 100 percent, there's too much on there. So I think by kind of peeling a layer or two off will we'll take a burden. And this is one of the things that I was going to address tonight. I, I was trying to figure out what was on the agenda tonight and I didn't know what was on the agenda tonight until I came here and got this because this is the printable version of what is on the website. I, I couldn't read it on the screen, and I still can't read it right now. Mm -hmm. So just something as simple as what Ms. Westwell said. If the town hall sends this to her in a PDF, correct? You could attach the PDF. Yes, this is how it comes to me. The right. town clerks set these, all these panels up, right. and they come to me so, in that format. You know, and again, the platform that we're using today doesn't have a printable version. It doesn't have a printable view. Mm -hmm. So. Short of that, the easy solution is scan to PDF, send that to Mrs. Westwell, and then at least you have an eight and a half by 11 readable version. There are free things we can do today to make the website better. That's not saying that we don't need a new website, because we do. Um, but, I, but I think that there are things that can be done immediately that would help. Mr. Singer? I want to also thank Mr. Coleman for giving Ms. Westwell a few, Ms. Westwell a few chuckles, and I'm sure we're going to see her bill go up now as it should have a decade ago. <laughs> it's my town. So like I said, I just wanted to start the conversation. I think, you know, those couple ideas, absolutely, they're brilliant to work on things now. And it, it's, it's going to be a multi-stage operation, working on making what we have better and more accessible and then playing for a couple of years down the road. Um, just thinking aloud, Mr. Graper, if we could actually uh, send out a survey to all the employees to figure out, you know, especially the department heads, on their uh, experiences with the website and uh, uploading information, just to kind of gauge their uh, feedback. Okay. 
I will, if I can, give you some feedback now. I have never had a complaint from a department that their information did not get up in a timely mm -hmm. manner. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa is very, I, I think she's there in the middle of the night probably posting <laughs> things. Only when you call me, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's not necessarily been any issue about trying to get it up as far as departments being able to do their mm -hmm. own web page. It is partly in, in getting departments engaged. And that would be on our side, not on a webmaster side. Um, I do agree with Mr. Coleman that um, to really have a good site, you really start need, it's not only capital, but you also need to start looking at some labor, someone that's going to be mm -hmm. taking a look at that. And that is an area that um, we have not invested in well on the town side as far as technology and... Um, Public information officer or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So we've done, a, we've done a lot with a little, and I think Lisa is one of those um, examples who, who has treated the town very well, mm. very good, has been there. And, um, and she's always ready to engage also when we've wanted to do something new. Absolutely. So we do have a partner with her. Um, one of the things I've, I heard in this uh, dialogue was that maybe we can help her get some assistance in some of the things that we want to do. So maybe it's not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but trying to start to look at some ways to add some additional pieces and get her some support. Like creating the, the forms. <coughs> Ms. McGrath? Um, Robin, could we please ask the town departments and the, the department heads to review the content mm. for their departments on the website and please remove anything that they don't think needs to be on there or is outdated. Yeah. Yes. Or, or if they realize they're missing a critical component of information or contact information or updated board memberships or whatever to let us know. Through, through the chair. Ms. Noble? The other thing I'd like to ask the departments to do <coughs> is to designate an individual in their department to, if nothing else, take a look at their web page occasionally and make sure that they have a point person that sending the proper information to Lisa so that she has the right tools to do her job. They need to designate somebody that's going to take charge of that. Hmm. And I think that turns into a larger conversation of creating a policy, you know, going forward of how we manage websites. Uh, to my knowledge, I, it, what we have is perhaps a little outdated. Just revisiting that policy mm -hmm. as a board and as an office yep. to figure out, you know, what are our best practices. But the first question is to ask those questions to figure out what's working and what's not. So I ask you, you know, both to please be involved, and you know, I, we appreciate all your work and involvement so far. Uh, and Ms. Westwell, I know one thing every year, uh, whenever your contract comes up, I'm always relieved. I say, yes, she still <laughs> wants to do it. So we, we do really appreciate all, everything we've done for the town so far. Thanks. And I, I know it's not, you know, I know it doesn't look like all the other town sites. And I, I'm not always a fan of, of mobile-friendly sites. Be, yeah, it, when friendly. the content is, is enormous, it can be difficult to manage that much content. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, there are definitely things we can do to clean it up, pare it down. It's got a lot of, like, and I'm all for, you know, we didn't really talk about social media. I don't know if you want to have that conversation because you have other appointments, but my position on social media, and I've had this conversation more than once, it's wonderful if you don't allow anybody to comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true if theme. You use it just to post things to keep the community aware, because I use Facebook on my phone all the time, and you know I'm, I'm not much for Twitter or anything like that, but you know if, you, if the town wanted to have a social media presence, I've, I've seen many towns, they post, they allow comments, and Facebook just, Facebook explodes. Social media explodes, people don't have a filter, they, they don't, they're not truthful, and there's a lot of moderating that you have to do if you're posting. Mm. So my position on the town having social media is it's wonderful to get the word out on things like Berlin Game Road is closed, but I would keep it very factual and without any opinion, and, you know, if you wanted to look into doing a, a Facebook page or something like that. And, you know, maybe, maybe Steve can can be involved, or maybe we should have a little committee and sit down and figure it out. Absolutely. And I'll get, take the survey and, and put some of us together that 
Yeah, I'm happy to sit on it. And we appreciate, really appreciate that. And like I said, we're not going to be solving this tonight. So this is just that first step in, uh, in that long journey that we'll be taking uh, many meetings to, uh, to work on. Can I just ask one more thing? Sure, Ms. Noble. Just one, one final comment. Um, you talk about paring down the website because there's too much there. If you could come up with, and I don't want to make this overly burdensome on you, but if you could come up with a list of items that you think should be archived, that would be a okay. good jumping off point. Also, if you have any suggestions, uh, you know, being the board being able to supplement, saying, well, I really wish I could do this, but my training hasn't really taught me this, but would make the, you know, for a, a huge improvement for a small investment, please let us know as well. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll just say Ms. Snowball just made a, a, a great point in the word she used, archived. Mm. We just have to be cautious that with public records, Absolutely. Laws, that we can't just discard things from the website. So it has to go somewhere. It may not have to be visible on the town side, but it does have to be archived under public records. Exactly. You know, That's why I use that yeah. word. <laughs> obviously, you know, I would never, we'll never try hiding anything, just making it more accessible. Right. Is there any other comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I would just like to, uh, one of the things that I was going to, to um, mention on the public forum, but it, it really kind of has to do with this conversation as well, is I would ask this board to look at uh, cable television and sort of the meeting schedule, how these, I, I think in my opinion, uh, as someone who's been engaged in town activities for many, many years, I think that the accessibility of, of watching, and I'm going to use your meetings as an example, the accessibility of watching your meetings has actually gotten worse over the years than better. Um, I can't find you. I can't find you online. I can't find you on television. I took some time today. I did. I, you know, I kind of did some poking around on the website, um, looking under the the cable section. Um, the board of selectmen's meetings have not been updated on the website since June of last year. June of 2016 is the last Board of Selectmen's meeting that was posted online. And is that the, the online for, because I think they're putting them on YouTube. They may have switched where they're actually putting them because I believe they're all online well, now. Well, so that was going to be one of my so questions So one of the questions tonight. maybe have because we directed Because if, if they nicely. are, mm -hmm. when was that decision made and where is that announced because hmm. I, I don't know that. I, I didn't know that either. either. That's the yeah. point. Because that website. website is, just so everybody knows, that townofcharlton.net website is a separate website Thanks. from the Charlton TV cable. Charlton. Yeah, TV, TV Charlton. Charlton. Mm -hmm. I don't know who manages that one. Mm -hmm. But that's where all the... But planning, planning board started. meetings, other meetings, they're on the site in 2017. If you go to the website and you go to Charlton Cable Television, you can find other board and committee meetings updated on that site. Board of Selectmen is not. And even the ones on 2016, when you click view, they don't open. The, play, the players don't. The players don't work. That is not so, ideal. Uh, Ms. Graber, I would ask that we look into this. So my, my suggestion tonight was going to be to use YouTube. To many, com many communities have switched to the YouTube platform. I think it's a great platform. It's the right platform. That was going to be my suggestion. Right. But I, I guess I think it's kind of comical that my, one of my questions tonight was, did it move and nobody knew? And, and there's board members clearly, Ms. Westwell doesn't know. It's not on the website if it got switched to YouTube. I'm hearing some chatter behind me that it possibly did. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but I, I always go to the TV Charlton icon. I think that's on the front of the yeah, web page. If you go to the website and click TV Charlton. Where you go. Yeah. So that's you're saying that's where there's I went no today. link there to get to those. There's, a, to there's a link. If you click TV Charlton on the home page of the website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it gives you the schedule of right. what's playing. So I wrote it down today. I can watch a planning board meeting. I can watch the last planning board meeting four times a day if I choose to. Board of Selectmen, your August 8th meeting, it's on television. There's no schedule on television, so I can't even go to 192 and look to see when it's playing next. Okay. okay. I can find it on TV, maybe randomly, but I can't find it on the website. It's, it's not updated there. So you, I, I just think the board used to be more predictable. It was every other Tuesday. It was aired. It was on television. You could find it online. I can't find you. And if it's not on our website, we should have, as we're discussing, <laughs> front and center, easy to locate. Oh, exactly. This is where it is now. Right. And I encourage, if, if anyone has any trouble accessing this, 
you know, our office is always available to reach by phone, by email, right away. If, if you're not finding anything, let us know so we can work on it immediately. So, but I appreciate you bringing that forward and uh, I, I would like to have um, your the cable have committee a conversation and, with uh, an update on that for our next meeting, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Westfall. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Just to remind you, I do have one more thing on top of comment, but whenever you're ready, I'll just one Mr. Coleman, um, if you want to take care of that now, uh, how how, uh, how long do you think? Just a minute. Okay. And then we'll get, get right to our 730 point. Sure. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to ask the board to look at as well is um, one of the programs that I, I really enjoy uh, that, that this board um, hosts and entertains is the Student Select Person uh, mm -hmm. program. I think it's a great program. I don't know if this year's uh, Student Select Person has been chosen yet or if that hasn't been advertised yet. But I'd like to make a couple of recommendations, just in, in my opinion, just kind of looking at the program over the years. Um, I'd like the board to at least consider a couple of things to kind of make that program a little more interactive and more of a learning experience uh, from, from the student's perspective. Obviously, having a public administration background, uh, I think um, having the public, especially the student select person, engaged in government being civic-minded, that's why they're sitting in that seat. And I, in my opinion, I don't know that they're, that they're actually getting the best learning opportunity. They come every other Tuesday and they sit in the chair and they wait about two hours and then they deliver their report, which again, it's great information. It's good experience for them to get some time on camera at the mic, dealing with um, and working with elected appointed officials Seeing, seeing government work, that, that's important. Um, but I'd like to see them given some sort of a project, something to, something to work on. Uh, and my suggestion to that, because believe me, now having a, a son in high school, I see the volume of, of homework that is given. One might turn around and say, well, the last thing they need is, a, is another assignment on top of school. So I'd also ask the board to consider maybe appointing two student selectmen that would rotate every other week. So therefore, their commitment instead of every other week would only be once a month. They're here for an entire school year. So it's, it's a long period of time. But it's also a program that I'm, I'm assuming you have more than one application a year. So it might. I believe it's actually presented from the school committee. The school committee presents uh, the Right, but I, so I'm assuming the school committee gets more than one application a year. So if the board would be willing to accept two student select you know, persons, you would, have, you would have one every other week. So they would have a once a month commitment. It may lessen the load on their school and academic life, but it would also give them a partner to pair up with to work on some sort of a, of a project. Mm -hmm. And some of that educational experience, I also you know, think a conversation with board members, you know, individually, uh, to talk about public policy, talk about uh, you know, budget and finance, talk about cost-benefit analysis, talk about the challenges. Mr. McGrath, you talked about it earlier tonight, about the challenges of the school system and you know, looking at a Prop 2 and a half override. They, I, I think sometimes they sit here and they listen to this global conversation going around, on around them, but I often wonder, do they, under, do they completely understand it? Mm -hmm. And do they understand kind of the process behind it? And I think that everybody at that table has something to offer those students in terms of a little bit of a civics and, and public policy education. And I, I would just like to see that happen a little more. Absolutely, and just, and just for the interest of time, just to make sure we get back on track, I, I appreciate this and something we'll definitely look into. Uh, even you know things like extending the invitation to, to be half or mm -hmm. uh, getting other people involved okay. uh, or at different levels. Um, but um, yeah, I would like to see us take this up at another uh, future meeting. I think it would be um, helpful. I think Mr. Coleman has some great ideas, mm -hmm. and I think it would be helpful for him to have that conversation with the superintendent of schools. Absolutely. And if you want um, to, to start the there, and then we could kind of bring it back. I, I just want to make sure I heard correctly. You want me to? I don't have a problem with that. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. You want me to reach out to Mr. Desto? I Desto? think that that would be helpful sure. as a I, resident. I, no I think he that. would he would like to hear it from you. You, yes. s you say it very passionate, mm -hmm. and I would be very happy to work with you on that. But I think um, in the past, the board has tried to work on that student, and we've gotten a clear message from the school that they um, have a process set up and how they do it. So sure. I would refer you to him before we take it up. Yeah, the next even if time. I have to pay a visit to the school committee, I 
would have no problem doing that. Okay. Um, just, just one comment. What you're describing is more of an internship, and I like that idea much more than just having someone sit there and be subjected to our selectmen meetings and then give their report. Perhaps if you couched it in that fashion, when you talk to the school committee, tell them that it's not just going to be an individual sitting here, but it could be an actual internship. Maybe we could even have it count for course credit. Mm -hmm. I like that idea much more, because that's what it sounds like you're talking about, is an internship. Mm -hmm. Yep, Mr. Swenson. Uh, thanks for your input. I, I think it, it's great ideas. One thing that I've always thought that I would like to see with the student select prison, so like it's been said a couple of times tonight, is they come and sit here and put up with us for a couple of hours and read what's going on up at the hill and then they go home. Um, I, on a more basic level, I'd like to see, and this would be on us as a board, when the new student select person comes in, to sit with them and try to get them more just involved in the meetings while they're here mm -hmm. to contribute some more to the discussion mm -hmm. and offer a different perspective than we're going to get from, from, from this board. So I think that could be incumbent upon us when we get our new student select person sit here and, and tell them. Because history has been, you come, you know, it's, it's the first thing a student select person is going to say, well, what do I do? Well, you prepare your student select person's report, wait till they call and you read your report. So I think it's incumbent on us as a board if when we get our new student select person to say, you know, we're glad to have you, we'd like you to, would like to hear your opinions, would like, if you have thoughts, and opinions on any of the topics that we're discussing, mm -hmm. please speak up and join the conversation. Yes, right. Well, that's something I've, you know, I have done with the students like places past is something I've personally said to them. Uh, but I think, you know, really being. Reiterate that the board is not taking up anything tonight regarding any um, decisions on policies, decisions on approving or not approving any licenses, if I'm correct on that. Just uh, explaining from our last meeting uh, what happened and what's going on and what the, our office has currently been doing. So Ms. Craver has prepared a memorandum. Uh, as a lengthy one, so I would please ask you to p be respectful and pay attention. Um, and we can move on to a, a discussion relating to the issues brought up tonight um, and uh, in a, a more uh, brief time frame. Ms. Graver? Yes, sir. At your last meeting, Mr. Russ Jennings stated he had not been afforded an opportunity to come before the board to request permits he had submitted. He quoted something that I said, which was to ask him why he wanted to come before the, why he wanted to come before the board if he was going to be denied. He did not place the statement in context except to insinuate that I purposely kept him from coming before the board that night. I had relayed that I didn't remember making the statement, but it certainly could have been a question I asked. In no way would I prevent someone from coming before the board if it was clear that they wished to come. I would have called the chair and it would have been his decision whether to make the exception to the board's, board's policy. Reflecting on the whole conversation, I now remember the context what it was that I thought I was waiting for from the building commissioner, given that he did not sign off on the permit request and a cease and desist was still in place. We talked about several issues relating to Mr. Jennings' business. Here's a timeline of the events from that meeting up to today. On June 20th, a cease and desist order was issued by the zoning enforcement officer to 215 Brookfield Road, um, 2508 International Sunset City and associate businesses Notice to cease and desist all unlicenses or unpermitted activities. On July 25th, Amber Howard dropped off four applications for events for the selectmen to approve. After reviewing the events with Ms. Howard, Ms. Devlin explained the selectmen do not have jurisdiction to approve the events which were as follows. A seven-day entertainment to be used on August 12 and 13, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. for American Summer Classic, ATV, 5 by 5 dirt bike and at 215 Brookfield Road. A seven-day entertainment to be used on August 19th through the 26th, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. for Grizzly As Adams Games and Endurance Race. It's an obstacle course which included a Jeep Fest at 215 Brookfield Road. A seven-day entertainment to be used on September 23rd from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. for Vintage Moto Show at 215 Brookfield Road, and a seven-day entertainment to be used on September 30th 
through October 1st, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. for off-road championship ATVs, 5x5s, dirt bikes at Brookfield Road. These requests were for the selectmen to approve the events itself. It was explained to Ms. Howard that seven-day entertainment is for live entertainment such as music, DJs, etc. To help her out, her requests were forwarded by Ms. Devlin by email to department heads and police and fire staff asking if anyone needed anything from them to hold these types of events to please contact her. For more information, big cities and towns have licensing boards that deal with these types of requests. They also have bylaws, rules, and regulations and policies that allow them to make the approvals. The town of Charlton does not have the same bylaws, rules, and regulations and policies that big cities and towns do and are limited by what we, have, what we do have. At the board's July 25th meeting, it was stated that 508 could only apply for 11 more days of special license events due to the ones that were already approved. Knowing the special license requests were being reviewed with other departments, Ms. Devlin spoke with Mr. Jennings about the days available he could request, and he asked to go with the events on August 19 for Grizzly Adams Games, Survival, and Woodsman Challenge, and on August 26 for the Jeep Fest. On August 27, we received the special liquor license applications that were, view, were reviewed from the building commissioner. The applications were approved by the fire department on July 24 and the police department on July 24. The building commissioner opined his opinion that activity beyond motocross events are not permitted at the venue until a temporary or permanent certificate of completion and or a certificate of occupancy is issued. Further, the issuance of special liquor licenses would be limited to only days that motocross events are occurring as other requested activities are not permitted on the site in the site plan approval issued by the planning board. The applications were not approved by the building commissioner. Per the policies and procedures for requesting special one-day alcohol licenses, Number two, applicant must get sign-off from each department listed, police, fire, building, to ensure proper documents are received. As stated in the application, it was not signed off as approved by the building commissioner. A discussion was held on August 8th with the building commissioner, Kurt Maskus, Mary Devlin, Russ Jennings, and myself. Mr. Jennings wanted the Board of Selectmen to review the licenses for approval. It was explained to Mr. Jennings that the applications were not complete. It was also stated that there was a cease and desist on the property and no activity could be held at this time. During the discussion, it was mentioned by Mr. Meskis that we could wait to see what the planning board's decision was the following night, and if it's approved, he would be able to issue a temporary occupancy permit, which would allow the licenses to go forward with stipulations pending the requirements of the planning board site plan. Mr. Meskis had the temporary occupancy permit ready to release once 508 provided the performance guarantee as required by the planning board. No one from 508 came forward with the requirements needed to receive the temporary occupancy permit. Therefore, the cease and desist is still in force. August 15th, the board held a meeting where the, an agenda item was related to the board's request for more information on licenses and permits issued by the board. I was not contacted prior to the meeting by Mr. Jennings asking why he was not placed on the agenda. If he had, I would have notified the chairman of the omission. Instead, it was my understanding from the August 8th meeting that we agreed to wait and see what the planning board did, and Mr. Meskis would provide additional information. We were hoping that the planning board would accept the remaining work as incidental and Kurt would issue a temporary occupancy permit. I was informed that Mr. Jennings did not comply with the board, planning board's requirement to provide a bond, and he had not received the temporary permit. This was the information I was waiting for. I did not know 508 would want to be before the board without the temporary occupancy permit. Again, if he had contacted me once he realized he was not on the agenda, we could have added it. I was surprised by his comments at the meeting. August 16th, it was brought to my attention that 508 did not appeal the June 20th cease and desist order and did not reply in writing as to their intentions within the 10-day time period. It was further related to me that on August 12th and 13th, 508 held events on their property not permitted by site plan without a certificate of compliance and in violation with the, of the cease and desist. Mr. Meskis informed me that he had asked Mr. Jennings what his intentions were for that weekend and he, as he was still advertising the events and he would not answer. At Mr. Meskis' request, we held a phone conference between Mr. Meskis, Jonathan Silverstein from Kilkman and Page Law and myself. 
After reviewing options to bring 508 into compliance and to stop further violations, the building commission, commissioner decided to move forward and file an injunction with the land court. Department of Trial Court to enforce the town's zone, zoning bylaw and ongoing violations by 508 for activities not permitted by the Town of Charlton Planning Board site plan approval dated August 12th and without a certificate of compliance issued in accordance with the Town of Charlton bylaws. I was in agreement. On August 17th, the case was filed in land court for a temporary restraining order ordering the defendants to cease and desist from using the property for any commercial purposes or otherwise without a proper occupancy permit and certificate of compliance, except as to perform work authorized under the board's site plan decision and to enter a preliminary injunction ordering the defendants to cease and desist from using the property for any commercial purpose or otherwise without a proper occupancy permit and cert certificate of compliance except as to perform work authorized under the planning board site plan division. This was brought to the court on an emergency ex parte basis because the defendants had advertised a boxing event between the Mass State Police and Denver City Brotherhood for August 19th to be held on the property in violation of the site plan approval, zoning bylaw, and the cease and desist order. Likewise, defendants have advertised endurance games to be held on the property on August 20th. In addition, advertising for New England's Jeep Fest to be held on the property August 26th off-road championship to be held on the property on September 30th through October 1st, disc golf tourney to be held on the property October 7th, and Grizzly Adam games to be held on the property on October 28th. The, cease, this, the case was scheduled for Tuesday, August 22nd. An emergency hearing was held on Friday, August 18th on the defendant's motion to partially dissolve the temporary restraining order. As a result of the hearing, the judge advised that she would modify the terms of the temporary restraining order and carve out a limited exception for the endurance game scheduled for Sunday, August 20th, based in part of the rep representation that the state police event scheduled for Saturday, August 19th, had already been canceled by 508 <coughs> after they received the um, TRO. The court further advised that until the court rules otherwise, there will be no more events held at the property. The court ordered the TRO to remain in place, the temporary restraining order, to remain in place until the preliminary injunction hearing scheduled for September 1st. On August 28th, Ms. Howard came into the office with a public records request for copies of all liquor licenses issued, issued by the Board of Selectmen for the past 12 months. Ms. Devlin completed this for her the same day and emailed it to her. On August 30th, Ms. Howard came into the office at 2.40 and asked for copies of all their special liquor licenses. She stated that she never received any. The office sends the completed license signed by the board upon approval. Applicants, the applicants normally make their own copies before submitting them. Ms. Devlin compli complied with Ms. Howard's request the same day and emailed them to her at 3.34 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Graber. I know that was a lot, um, so I'll open up for questions from the board. I know. Uh, last meeting, there were some questions brought by a couple members on our process, and uh, <coughs> hopefully that answers those questions that were brought up during that time. Yes? No? I'm good. I see no questions. I'll open it up to uh, Mr. Jennings. Did you want to say something? Well, I'm just I'm amazed at the wealth of information that you've assembled in this timeline. Um, I really I don't understand. Um, how a simple request to yourself of mine to be placed on the agenda to talk to the Board of Selectmen has turned into this conversation. And this is, it, it's just mind-blowing. I feel like I'm in an improv show in Cambridge or something. It's just, it's crazy. Mr. Jennings, I ask you um, to please be respectful. Oh, I, I definitely think I am, Joe. I mean, through the chair, I don't, I, I'm, Flabbergasted. So, <coughs> Mr. McGrath. Russ, I think what happened was that there were some, there were a lot of questions from the board as to how our office could have kept you off of the um, the agenda, and I think that in in response to that, Ms. Craver has gone through all the documentation that she has and spent a lot of time doing this and putting it together so that there wouldn't be any question as to why you weren't on the agenda. Um, 
So, you know, that, that's, why we, that's why we have what we have here. Okay, it's a timeline of what happened and how it happened and who was there and when it happened. Because so I would say that, you know, you say, Mr. Jennings, it's a simple request. This was not a simple request as we just listened to over three pages of, of information and timeline where this is a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. And one thing that really resonates is, absolutely, if, if you were not aware that, you know, we post our meeting, if you're not on the agenda and that's an error, why did you not reach out to us? Why did you not talk to us at the beginning of a meeting where you attended the entire meeting in the back of the room? Well, I'm not familiar with the policy of when I'm not placed on the agenda, at which point in time I should say something. I mean, I naturally assume it's to come to your meeting. But, um, so, based off what you just said, John, mm -hmm. um, with the wealth of information that Mrs. Graber assembled, that was the determination not to place me on the agenda. If, if I read it, if, uh, as I was listening and I was reading it, Russ, that wasn't the, the reason why you weren't on the agenda. It was because the item that you want to, wanted us to act on didn't have all the approvals that it needed. There was no need for you to be on the agenda. We and, you didn't, and, so you didn't, and you didn't, and, and in reading this, there was, there was a spot in there where, where we were waiting for A, the planning board, B, for some action from you, whether you were going to get a bond so that you could get a temporary, and, and Kurt had, had it written up. And so the planning board acted, you didn't act, and, and then there's nothing for us to do, okay? And, and I, will, I will follow that up with what Joe said, is that if you noticed that you weren't on the agenda and you had a question about why you weren't on the agenda, you should have approached the Board of Selectmen. Either call me, call the town, you know, if, if you didn't want to call the town administrator or the Board of Selectmen, call the chair. But, you know, the, it, it's... We spent a lot of time going over this. I, I'm certainly not saying you, you have it. I'm saying that I believe you spent and that's part of the issue. My issue is that the decision was made prior to your board of I'm not going to be placed on the agenda. That, Mr. That's, Mr. Jennings, that's what happened. The issue is so, that we couldn't act on your item because it was an incomplete application. We're not going to act on an item, a item on our agenda, to discuss something that's not complete yet when we present it so, to the board. Ms. So, so, Russ, when, when you were here last time, we talked about you being treated fairly sure. and everyone being treated fairly. I yep. remember you know, having this conversation with you. And when accusations are made, Sometimes people have a tendency to go above and beyond the scope that you would expect when they provide additional information. I think what Ms. Craver put together went above and beyond what she needed to do. And, and I, for one, appreciate her hard work because it really does lay out the timeline of what events took place, if not why they took place. And I don't in this context, I don't think that you were treated unfairly. I, I think what happened was miscommunication. Maybe we needed to communicate with you better that in order for you to be on the agenda, you needed to have the bond in. Perhaps you didn't realize that, but then that burden would be on, on you in a way because you knew you had to get that done in order for the paperwork to come before us. No. I, I think what's been laid out here is, is very fair and equitable. Well, if I may. Yes, Mr. Please. Jennings. Um, through the chair. Um, I, I find it, I don't know, I, I find dif difficulty in the fact that I had a 45-minute discussion with Mrs. Craver, mm -hmm. Mr. Meskus, and Mary Devlin. And the fact of the matter is, from what I'm being told, the only information that was not in your select person's office mm -hmm. in order to be processed was Kurt's signature on, on the paper. That's the only thing that was not, 
that was not part of the application. Now, whether or not it was going to be approved or not approved is not the question. The question is, what was preventing that application from moving forward? And I sat in an office for 45 minutes and had the discussion and said, regardless of if that's not going to be approved, I still want to sit and have the opportunity. So the question is about the paperwork. The question is about the signature. Um, short of that, it, it doesn't matter the history of what happened that would lead to a denial when it came before this board. The bottom line is, you folks never got the opportunity. I, I, I will say one thing um, about that, Mr. Jennings. Sure. When you said that, you know, obviously we, we had that long, you know, good discussion on, on what happened in the office. The last time you didn't say, in something you said now, that you requested to be on the agenda. That was not brought up last time, is now being brought up no. now. So I, I see some kind of, I see a discrepancy there. Through the chair? Mr. Absolutely Jennings. not. I specifically stated, um, I'm sure other people at the table may recollect that I specifically stated in that meeting that I wanted to be placed on the agenda numerous times. And I stated that at your meeting. And, you know, I, I've watched the tape from the last meeting numerous times. So I could be clear when I came here as to what was said and what wasn't. I also watched what happened after I left the meeting. And, you know, that's, that's a whole nother subject. Um, Mr. McGrath? Oh. I, I think we'll be laboring this now. Um, we've, we've put together what, what, what had happened in a timeline. Um, the next time you come before the board, Russ, that you, you, or that you think you should be coming before the board and you don't see it on the agenda or if you have a question, please contact the office. That's going to cost, stop all this stuff. Okay. Absolutely. Ms. Noble? Just, just one final thought. If I'm understanding you correctly and all of this, yes, I do recall you saying at the last meeting that you wanted to be on the agenda. I recall it clearly. I recall it several times. I'll, I'll back you up on that statement, no problem. If I'm understanding you, the reason you were upset or annoyed um, not, is because you weren't afforded the opportunity for the denial on the agenda. Is that correct? That's 100% correct. That's what I thought. I can understand that. I and can completely, and even though it would go against normal protocol to have something come before the board that was incomplete, because it was incomplete, you still want it to be afforded the opportunity to be heard and have the denial put on the record. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Okay. With, with exception to the fact that the application, to my knowledge, at that point in time during the meeting that I mm -hmm. had with Ms. Craver, Kurt, and Mary Devlin, I believe the application was complete according to the standards and specifications that your board sets forth for liquor license applications. Mm -hmm. Now, I was told at a later point in time that Kurt's signature was not on it. And this again brings me great cause that I would sit in a meeting for 45 minutes mm -hmm. with the decision makers, clearly, and they would not tell me that the paperwork isn't signed by one of the people in the meeting, and therefore it's not moving forward because of that issue. Um, Mr. Jennings, two things. One, I sure. want to clarify what I said earlier. Absolutely, I mean, you, you did brought up the point and you were uh, uh, upset that you weren't put on the agenda and you did express that. What I was talking about is when you're talking about the meeting between you, Ms. Craver, uh, Mr. Meskis, and uh, Ms. Devlin, that's when it wasn't specific, uh, explicitly, you know, maybe it wasn't explicitly, maybe it was a lack of, uh, lack of communications on both sides, that you still wanted to be on the agenda from that meeting. That's what I was trying to say, that during that meeting, you didn't bring up that you said it at that, at that point. But while you were uh, speaking, Ms. Devlin was, um, uh, if you feel like, did you want to say something, Ms. Devlin, about uh, Mr. Jennings' last statement? Hey, Russ. Russ and I had a conversation about this, and we, the office really does work with the applicants when they come through. All the offices work great together. So with your policy, um, we don't get the application until it's completely signed off by all departments. 
we do try to work with the applicants when they come in if I know they're coming. I've notified you before when they're done and ready to go so you can be here. Um, but it goes through the process and it's up to the applicant to make sure these are signed off. They should be checking with the departments. And I did bring that to his attention again, correct? And it does fall on the applicant, it's on, the, it's on your application. But in our conversation, he did say he wanted to go forward. And I think we mentioned that it wasn't completely signed off, that Kurt didn't sign off on it, so we couldn't bring it forward per your policy. And the discussion was about waiting to see what happened with the planning board, correct? We went through all that. But you did request to be on here, and we did talk about it and say that. The application wasn't complete per their policy. It couldn't come from to in front of the board. And I think you wanted them to make that decision, but my job is to make sure the application is complete so they have everything in front of them. And we couldn't bring it in front of them because it wasn't complete. I, I'm, I'm going to shed a little light on the situation here. The, the whole reason why we desired the application to be moved forward is because we felt at that point in time that certain people were erring in their judgment and not making the correct calls um, that would prevent the license from moving forward. Now, going into the timeline that Ms. Craver has established a little bit and going for an injunction ex parte, which means without our participation or knowledge so that we could be there to defend ourselves, and which happened on Thursday of that week. Now, that was a direct move to block some of the events that were coming up and were going to happen that we had advertised for. One was state police boxing, um, and the other was the endurance games. That was on that immediate weekend. Now, alcohol sales were gonna happen at those events, and naturally, I would want that move forward. Now, if the people who make decisions and made a decision incorrectly that would ultimately prevent me from selling alcohol on those days, naturally, as Ms. Craver had stated before, they would take responsibility for that. Now, when we went to court after finding that there was a restraining order in place, we had it reversed for one of those days. So clearly the judge saw things differently than our building commissioner zoning enforcement officer. And therefore, we were allowed to have that event. Now, obviously, based off the judge's decision, we should have been able to have alcohol sales on that day. I don't, I don't understand um, how, I, I guess I wasn't clear in that meeting. And it's shame on me, it's a learning lesson that uh, I have to get everything in writing from this point forward. And um, it's, it's just unfortunate on my side of the table at this point in time. I guess, I guess that's, the, that's how I'll walk away from the table this evening. From, from the last two uh, statements from Ms. Demel and yourself, it, that does clear up a lot. Um, and I appreciate both of you explaining that. And like I said, you know, per, my phone number is on the website. So if you have any questions before a meeting or anything, I encourage you know any doubt. Let me know. I appreciate that, Joe. And all of the select persons at the table, and all of the people in the town hall. I mean, I've been I've been coming to this town hall since since I was a kid. I mean, walking in here, I remember, you know, coming in with my mother and. My father wasn't allowed in the town hall because you know, <laughs> he was a little boisterous. But, um, you know, there's a lot of great people in the town hall. Um, Mary has always helped me out. I'm certainly not here to say that um, Mary's not doing her job. And, but I, I can't let a couple bad apples spoil a bunch. And certain things have happened along the way. Um, I haven't been able to review the timeline that was laid out this evening mm -hmm. and the facts involved, um, I think we're going to do that and we'd like to come back to your board and we have our own timeline to establish. So um, I guess we'll continue the conversation another time. So but thank you for your ear and getting back to me with the timeline and all your hard work. Much appreciated. Are there any comments from the board? Any comments from anyone else? No questions? Ms. Graber, thank you. Next meeting, I have a, an agenda item. Do you want to carry this again? Yes, please. Mm -hmm.
Thank you very much. We'll now move on to. Um, I just want to check. What do you want prepared for that? Anything for me? Uh, what are you pairing it? For? I would say Joe. I would say maybe it's just so that Ross can look at the timeline. Yeah. He has any anything mm -hmm. that he finds that he's, he thinks is a discrepancy on. Give him an opportunity to, yeah, to respond to what's written because he's probably just really seen it and heard the whole thing. Give him an opportunity to be heard. Absolutely. Okay. I was, oh, he already left. Um, I was going to suggest um, if, um, if you can relay a message that if, if there's any questions that you need our office to help with, you know, please reach out to us and we'll be able to answer or provide anything that, you know, we. I, I think he'll be able to work with Mary Devlin. She's the one okay. to put this together. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right, thank you everyone uh, for that. So we'll move on to new business. Our number one is the highway superintendent and update on Berlin Game Road, Potter Village Road. Road. Bridge and uh, uh, Gulf Wood. Ms. Graber? Yes, sir. Our office has received numerous calls regarding Potter, Potter Village Road and Gulf Wood Road. Burling Game Road was closed for a week or so due to a broken culvert um, and has been since reopened. Jerry Foskett, the highway superintendent, is here to provide an update on all those projects. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you for coming out tonight and I uh, appreciate your uh, patience. So, Mr. Foskett, take it away when you are ready. All right. Uh, we can probably start with Gulfwood Road. Sure. Okay. Uh, basically, Gulfwood Road was closed approximately two and a half years ago. I'm not positive on the time frame. It seems forever, actually. Two, really? Two and a half years? I'm not sure of the time. It's close. Yeah, you're pretty close. Well, yeah. I know, it's gone by. <laughs> I'm on yeah. the Jersey Bay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at the time, it was, well, let's let the water go down and we'll open it back up. But uh, we got into a situation with the beavers down there that they just weren't letting the water go down low enough for us to open it up at all. So we came up with a game plan that included trapping beavers, removing beaver dams, lowering in the whole area which would allow us to have the engineering and borings done. Let us see what we got for a roadbed to build on. Does it make sense financially and otherwise to move forward? So we did have the borings done. We basically know what we're dealing with to try to correct the problem down there to make it a safe passage through there. That doesn't, uh, that was the easy part, the hard part was when we started talking about beavers and the need, at least from my perspective, I thought it was my obligation to present the options to the board. I show no partiality either way as far as the beavers. I'm going to try to stay in that realm. <laughs> but the real truth is the road will be closed forever if the beavers aren't removed. That's the bottom line. Uh, so I reached the point where my skills and my time were, trend, you know, the real effort needed to be from Todd Gerard from the conservation to start dealing with the Board of Health conservation from the town of Southbridge. And if you would, I'd like Todd to kind of give us a rundown of what he's gone through with the meetings, with the public, what he's dealing with, and where we stand. Be so kind, Mr. Gerard. Uh, good evening for those of you who do not know me. I'm Todd Gerard, the Conservation Recreation Director. And as Jerry was saying, I'm just getting a lot of feedback and reverb right now, uh, about Gulfwood Road. So what happened is we have beavers, they've inundated the area, they've flooded the road out, and I've gone to both Southbridge Conservation and Charlton Conservation with a <clears throat> filing a notice of intent to lower the water, remove the beaver, dams themselves, remove the debris, and have the water go flow back in the brook like it should at the proper elevations. So I have achieved an order of conditions from the town of Charlton, and I achieved an order of conditions from the town of Southbridge. The town of Southbridge was under a 10-day appeal period, and some people appealed it, but their appeal was not filled out properly, so their appeal was denied. So for a short period of time, I thought we were under denial and we weren't going to get anything done. 
The DEP has denied that appeal, so I'm under the order of conditions to lower the water. I'm recording that order tomorrow on the deed. I have a meeting with a man called Pastor Mike. He's in charge of the, the church that the Beaver Dam is located on that parcel. And Thursday morning, we begin lowering the water. Next week, I return to Southbridge Board of Health for a 10-day temporary trapping permit. What that allows is our trapper, Malcolm Spicer, is the subcontractor we've utilized, to utilize a special kind of trap to catch beavers out of season. It's a lethal trap uh, to catch beavers out of season and eradicate that problem. Once the dam is down and the beavers are gone, I will be able to keep this water flowing and maintain the roadway dry enough for Jerry and the engineering team to get out and do their studies and figure out what they have to do to correct this. Um, these beavers are going to continue to be a, a situation across town. I, um, it's a very controversial subject. I'm right in the middle on this. I, I'm not pro beaver. I'm not pro trapper. This is just what I have to do. There's a lot of heart in this situation. Uh, I love beavers and I love people. So. We do get these uh, human-animal interactions that never work out well for the animal. Um, but we're going to utilize it in the most ethical way that we can, open this road and get safety back to the workforce so Jerry can get his engineers out there and figure out what we got to do. Mr. Swanson? I've, I've heard many times over the years, we've, we've had several beaver discussions. Um, and the general consensus seems to be that they will come back. If you trap them and remove them, they will still, they're going to come back. They're coming back. So is this a viable long-term solution? <laughs> so Trapping them and removing them just so they can come back again. So beavers are rodents. Uh, they multiply exponentially. The difference between a beaver in the Gulfwood Road and the mice that are in your shed is about 50 pounds apiece. So I get a lot of beavers. Two beavers, a biological set of beavers in 10 years produce over 600 beavers. I'll say that number again, over 600 beavers. Certain places in town, we do trapping regularly. Um, flood control facilities, some sewer facilities that the beavers will come in and inundate. We have to trap them out. This area will be an area that we will have to continue trapping. Uh, once we get the water down, there may be other alternatives. Beaver deceivers, we've tried them in the past. I don't think they're going to work here again. So a key to it is management and keeping the count down. So if you let it get out of control, we have to trap a lot of them. If you keep it all the time, you're trapping a fewer number regularly. Uh, and that's the plan we're going to use for for now until we can come up with a better Okay, technology. I guess that, that was my point. This, this, this isn't trap them and we're done. This is going to be ongoing continually, constantly yes. trapping to maintain the, the, the decreased the population and to maintain the water flow. So even okay. if you have beaver deceivers that are working, again, with that 600 beavers in 10 years, you're going to get an inundation of these beavers. There's also now... Trapping was changed around in 1996, so that's 21 years ago. In that time, beavers have inundated the entire town, well, the whole state. But the town of Charlton has been inundated. So any prime beaver habitat, they're there. Uh, and they're going to stay there as their strongholds. And they'll keep coming back out into these culvert areas that Jerry's going to have to be trying to keep the roads open. Sewer department will have uh, problems with sewers and, again, our flood control facility traps beavers out there also. But when we can utilize a less than lethal option, we have done it. We have uh, beaver deceivers in other parts of town that work. That work? They that actually work. work. Okay. But this just looks like one of the spots that I do not believe it's going to work, just due to the topography. Good. Thank you. Any questions on uh, Gulfwood Road? No. Just thanks to Todd mm -hmm. and Jerry. It's, uh, yeah. this, a, lot of time it's a difficult it's task. So going forward, then the plan is to start this annual trapping or this continuous trapping? Uh, we, right now, my only approved plan is to lower the water. Uh, I'm going before Board of uh, 
I should work Board of Health next week for Southbridge to get a 10-day trapping. But I can't say I have it yet in hand. So right now my plan is to just lower water because that's what I have approved, and I hope to get a trapping permit. If, if you get what happens after your 10 days, if that's I should have a, If I don't have them all trapped down in the 10 days, we go back and apply for another 10-day permit. Okay, because again, this is something that's going to have to be on an ongoing basis. On an ongoing basis. Whoop. Yeah, we go. So are you constantly going to be going for new permits, or how, um, how, will, how will that work? So the order of conditions is so it's a double permit. The order of conditions is good for three years, and that's to allow us to keep water flowing and the dam removed. The 10-day trapping permit is just that. It's from the Board of Health, and it's for a very specific type of trap. Uh, and it's issued for 10 days, so they just don't have free reign to go out and trap whenever they want. So I would have to continue to go back when I'd need another 10-day So any time we need to get rid of some more beavers, you would go back and get another 10-day permit or whatever. And get it's okay, days. thanks. I, I just voiced one concern in regards to that point. That's something that I'm concerned about, of making the investment. We're talking probably $150,000, $200,000 for something that the engineering team and myself have come up with. That's a rather large investment to have the Board of Health or Conservation from Southbridge in three years to decide, no, we're not giving you one. I just want that out there. I want everyone to understand. I, I don't want to you know, come back, geez, we put all that money in it, and now it's at the hands of a new board. As we all know, boards change. Conservation commissions change, and that may be something that we need to think about before this investment is made. I'm just trying to put it all out there, and that is something that I've been thinking about. Uh, which is what, I, as I was asking Todd these questions, was what I was thinking about. I mean, uh, are there benefits to the town of Southbridge to have uh, Gulfwood Road open? I believe so. I believe that we were getting, we were receiving complaints from not only members, Charlton residents, we were receiving complaints from Southbridge residents that they couldn't use Gulfwood Road when we first closed it. Because I, I guess my question would be, could we possibly, as a board, whoever the appropriate board would be, meet with Southbridge and see if we could come up with, I hate to use the phrase, but an IMA, a long-term IMA that will allow us to somehow control or maintain a certain level of beaver population on an ongoing basis before we that, that wouldn't require you to go and get a permit all the time. It's a permanent agreement like our IMA uh, on water that for a period of a certain number of years, we have the authority, we have their authority to, or they're okay to maintain the beaver population at a level that would allow us to keep the road open if we make this investment in rebuilding the road. Also, is there anything that can be done at the state that can maybe supersede something that the town could do in that regard, because I'm sure they have an interest in keeping roads open for personal travel, commerce, and emergency vehicle access. If it's a town-owned road, I, my thought would be no, but I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, know. Any so, option to try and get some long-term Yeah, because yeah, I, I agree. You know, we've, we've all been doing this long enough to know the boards change and, and, and things happen, and I, you know, it, it's, it's uh, I can see the value in spending the money to get that road open. Um, if, there, if it's a permanent solution and relying on, you know, anyone. I'm not, I don't mean any, you know, anything against the town of Southridge, but as you said, personnel changes. And to make that kind of investment and then have the possibility of you not getting a permit to trap beavers when they need to be trapped and all of a sudden we're back where we started, just $200,000 lighter. Well, 80% uh, of the investment's on the town of Charlton, so yeah. that's, that's my point. So I would, I we I, and I don't know how we have that, I don't know how the discussion goes forward, but I would like to see it go forward if we could try to read, and, and read some kind of an IMA type of agreement with, with Southbridge that would allow us, give us the authority to maintain the beaver population at a level adequate to keep the road open. Ms. Noble? Um, but, uh, just, just thinking about the, the more long-term solution here, um, rather than continuously going out there trapping and killing animals. Have we done any integrated pest management and what can we do to make the area less desirable for these rodents? So when the glaciers made Gulfwood Valley, <laughs> yes. they had beavers in mind. They even put a sign. Did they? Go there. Okay. So um, 
a lot of times for for less than lethal options, people mm -hmm. do things like uh, put wire around trees, utilize beaver deceivers that'll mm -hmm. that'll hold the elevation of the water. All those methods have been tried over the last about 15 years, okay. and they failed. Right. Um, so I figured we'll try something new for a while, and at least get this road up and running. And there are a few spots in town where that is my solution: is permanent trapping. Okay, just uh, wanted just to know that population will continue to go back to those spots. Mm -hmm. uh, nature's drawn them into that location, but it's just beavers like that spot, and humans like it too. Understood. Thank you. So, Usually, like I said when I started, when humans and animals interact, it doesn't work out well for the animal. Okay. Thank you. Um, Berlin Game Road? Okay, Berlin Game Road. Approximately two and a half weeks ago, maybe near three now, I got a call that the road was actually sinking over culvert. Kind of concerning. Went directly to the spot. And they're absolutely right. What happened, there was a 52-inch corrugated steel pipe that's probably been in the ground for over 50 years. The bottom had rotted to the point it was failing by weight of vehicles over and lack of cover. So first thing, no decision, tough to be made. Close the road, that was done. Notified Todd, Todd comes down. We, we always have to deal with the wetlands, and it's a river and whatnot. And Todd did everything he needed to do as far as permitting emergency license, and if you have something to add to that, that's basically he made it possible for the highway to get right after it. I know, you know, notifying the bus company was tough three days before school was going to open, but that's what I had to do. So anyhow, it was a failed culvert pipe. So I felt the best way to fix it would be to replace what was there. I mean, that's, so I checked with our vendor and it was about a three week out to get it. It's a special made flat bottom pipe to get the, the volume pipe that we need to put in in such a short height wise area. So we, I hemmed and hawed, I called other vendors, couldn't get anything different. I, I just want to give my vendor and the sad part is I can't, well, maybe I do have the name of the company. Contact Pipe Company. I got to give them a attaboy for calling me up within a couple hours of my first call in panic. And he said that they were just shifting over their pipe and they were going to, they could make that up for me in three days. I mean, that was a, that saved the, the time frame. But then we had to raise the road to make it work. We had some adjustments to make, but due to the, again, my guys really gave it up. They, they worked hard on the job because time was of the essence on that. We knew it. I heard it. I got the gestures from all the cars that were going by. <laughs> In case I wasn't sure how they felt, they made sure I knew. So, you know, we, had, we needed to get that done as quick as we can. I think it went well. It's completed. It was opened last week, one day. Uh, that's about it. It's just... Some of these things that we're dealing with, we, you know, the infrastructure in Charlton, I think, is maybe better than in some towns, but worse than others. And we'll deal with it as it comes and try to be proactive on others. But that was one of them that it just came right down to the last minute. Well, big thanks to you and, and the highway department for, you know, getting it done so quick and, you know, how, you know. <laughs> I was pleased in the time, time it took because I think, and it came out well. I'm happy mm -hmm. with it. Part of Village Road? The Part of Village Road is a, another story. Hmm. Uh, I think the best way to address it, there's been so many different stories about what's happened out there, what's happening. If you could just bear with me for a minute, I've, I've drawn up a timeline. It'll put maybe it in perspective and people will understand why we're where we are right now and not driving over a bridge that's completed. It just doesn't happen that fast. But I'll try to give you a, a real quick rundown of what, right from the beginning, it was March 31st of 2016, the bridge was closed. It was just in failure, couldn't be overpassed. Amazingly enough, the state notified communities that July 
of a new program. It's the new bridge program for small bridges that would become eligible for funding. It was like our only hope at the time. It was either that or come to town meeting, look for a debt exclusion, which I know wouldn't have been a problem in Charlton, it never is. But that isn't the route I wanted to go. Uh, chapter 90 would have been another option, but we're talking a serious amount of money. So that came in the nick of time. We had to get the application in by the 31st of that 2016, we did so. Uh, included in the application process was a preliminary cost estimate of approximately $723,000 with a maximum 500,000 reimbursement out of this program. It would be my suggestion that the balance above the grant max would be paid for with Chapter 90 funds. October 20th, 2016, we got the grant package completed and sent in. The awarding of the grant was officially March 29th of this year. May 31st, we signed a PSA with McClure Engineering for sites, uh, site design, construction, and oversight of services. The same day, we signed a PSA with Pair Corporation out of Foxboro for all preliminary and final design to be approved by MassDOT. August 9th, completed the reimbursement agreement with MassDOT and received notice to proceed. So now we're all set with the state, the funding mechanism, we're in place. The two companies that are on board had started their work already, but I had to pull the reins back on them because technically there was no funding. If the state decided to back out, we'd have been holding the bag. That cost us probably four weeks, but that's what you deal with. And I'm not knocking the state. I'll give them a... They're a great bunch of guys to work with. I really, they, they cooperate, they get back, they really work with you well, the bridge team especially. Uh, a structural review was done August 27th to allow preliminary design of the new superstructure. In other words, we went down there and opened up test pits. They needed to verify what they thought was in the ground. Them all came out good. We're hoping for no surprises. But here's where it gets complicated. It'd be approximately 180 days to get all permits, surveys, and design work approved by the state. So a pair company has to get their design, preliminary designs. The state has 120 days to get back to you whether they approve or disapprove. We're told they're gonna work diligently to get them back much sooner. They want these programs up and going. They need these programs going for people to see the work being done. That's what they're telling us. So. 180 days is probably realistic. That puts us sometime into February, and then it'd be another 180 days for the construction from day one to finish. So we're talking roughly September of next year. We're looking for completion of project. That's what we're hoping for. The footnote to it is the $500,000 max on this grant. I think it was a great thing, we're very lucky to get. It bailed us out, but I'm looking for a minimum of $250,000 balance that's gonna be looking looked for. Again, I suggest chapter 90 monies be used. I do have that in the bank, so to speak. I saved the money for that. I didn't spend it this summer. We did some work. We paved Hammond Hill this year. We did some chip sealing. We did some other maintenance type work but I felt it was to everyone's best interest to hold back on that Chapter 90 spending to make sure that we didn't need to come to the town to offset that. It's Chapter 90. Next year's allotment will be fully used for road reconstruction like it should be. That would be my suggestion. I'm just telling you that's what's there now. Mm -hmm. So unless Todd has anything to, Todd will be involved right through the whole project because of where it is and Dealing with my engineers, it's a great help. We work very well together. Things have gone good. So. That's all I have to offer for, unless there's any questions. That's a very good summary. I appreciate that. I know there's been some questions for our office of what's going on. Yep. Obviously, not having a bridge, suddenly you're, you're, you lose a very important point of access. Yep. But you know, I appreciate all the work and you know, getting that program. Thank you for, for <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's. Financial foresight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was great help. That's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Foskett. Thank okay. you, Mr. Driver. I appreciate you staying Thanks. and uh, all the good information.
I just want to thank Jerry in the highway department. Jerry's come to me to ask for environmental help. I'm going to utilize Burlingame Road as our example. So not only did he came to say, hey, I got to get this road opened ASAP, what kind of paperwork do I need? He sat down and said, what's my best management practice plan? What are we going to do? And we sat down and we developed our best management practice plan that we worked in a brook that we had no runoff leaving the area, no violations. And our highway department really takes a lot of pride in that and working around all of this water that we have in town and, and doing the best job that they can on it. And I think Jerry has done a real, he stepped forward on it to make sure that his whole crew is environmentally friendly and we're trying to just get as, as doing the best that we can and be up with uh, environmental code, and I just want to thank him for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you your time. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to item number two in it, under new business, the fire department for a staffing request. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. Chief uh, Fire Chief Kluyer is asked to be placed on the agenda to discuss the staffing request. Attached is the information regarding his request for your review. Good evening, Chief Kluge. Thank you for your patience. Good evening. You may take it away. All right, thank you. Um, as some of you may or may not know that uh, Captain Harris and uh, Firefighter Belanger have left the department. Uh, they are two open positions that we have. Under the uh, guidelines of the uh, grant grant that we used. Since the grant was placed into, uh, in, into service, we've been able to increase our call volume by 13%. As you know, call volume equals dollars, basically, into our coffers through ambulance receipts. Our uh, actual collected and deposited over 21% increase over the last year, almost $125,000 uh, to this date as well. And uh, this report was um, done back in August. Uh, we can attribute this to many of the calls that the town is able to do and uh, by using less mutual aid from other communities, which is basically a 62% reduction from other communities in staffing uh, by the added staffing. Our uh, overlap of back-to-back -back calls continues to be about 33% of our call volume, roughly 380 calls um, when this report was written. Uh, we responded to, for this year, our back-to-back -back calls. That means that when one ambulance or, or apparatus is out of the building, tend to one, tending to other persons in the community, um, another ambulance call or another call comes into the community which we need uh, to reply, uh, respond to. Um, without that staffing, we'll see that our, our mutual aid numbers continue to uh, increase again and thus revenue uh, decrease. We've also seen a 30% reduction in uh, personnel calling out sick by working less hours of overtime and uh, the personnel are much better rested and they're able to perform their uh, duties at a higher level. We're also seeing a savings of over $221,000 in overtime cost reductions since the implementation of the staffing change. Uh, this trend continues to be uh, once the new, uh, this trend will continue once the new firefighters graduate from the fire academy um, by November 2017. Um, in closing, basically, we're looking to see if we can uh, put these two positions out for, uh, to, to be filled, um, to fill not only the grant requirements, but to also to continue uh, with the commitment of being able to, um, you know, really test this model over the, the two-year period that we need to test it out through. So that's where we're at. Thank you. What are the wishes of the board? What exactly? We need to uh, we need to fill um, the two slots that are available and that are open. Uh, okay, that from us, a motion. A motion to Mr. fill. Yes. Please make sure you speak into the microphone. Do you need a, an uh, actual motion from this board, or can you act with by yourself and you just inform the board? Or do we need to actually give you a motion for that? Most of the time, we come in and ask for permission. So, if I made a motion then to authorize the chief to make those two hires, would that suffice? Yes, sir. No, so second. So motion. Motion. third. We have motion <laughs> second and third. We have fourth. Yes, yes. Motion, second, third, fourth. Mr. Swenson, is that what you were? Yeah, yeah, I was going to offer the motion. All right, is there any discussion on the motion? Seems pretty cut and dry. Just replacing. I appreciate you coming forward. And you know, it's, it's all, I always appreciate these updates, you know, seeing what's going on. It's amazing how, <laughs> how much activity is going on in town. From the chair, it was good to see the numbers, the, the change, the revenue increase. Mm -hmm. 
the sick time down, the overtime uh, cut. That's those are great numbers, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, it's the, the because of the hard work of the guys that are doing it, and uh, it's really good. And I appreciate your support. That's really what it's about. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Chief, it's on. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Item number three on a new business, a site plan application for a coffee house. Ms. Craver. Yes, sir. We've received a copy of a site plan application from the planning board submitted by DC Engineering and Survey Incorporated on behalf of Cherico Properties, LLC, to operate a coffee house, coffee shop on the first floor of the existing building at 7 Brookfield Road next to the Charlton Sewing Center. A total of 10 parking spaces are proposed. Said property is zoned community business. You are asked to review and provide comments, if any, to the Planning Board no later than Wednesday, September 20th. Thank you. Are there any comments from the Board? Mr. Just Swenson? Just a question. Uh, can someone tell me what building that is? I'm not familiar with it. Sewing Center is the old church, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So what building is it that's next to that? There's like a house, that, like a, an old house there. It had a hairdressing in it on the first yeah. floor? Oh, okay. Hair so just the Route 20 yeah. side. To the, yeah, yeah. Just the Route 20 mm -hmm. side of the, of the sewing center. Right. The, the Going towards place. countryside. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Country bank, right? Country bank, yep. Yep. Thank you. Excuse me. Is that is that near the Route 20 yes. traffic light there with the honey farms and... Mm, it's the opposite side of the street. The opposite yeah. side of the street, yeah. Correct. But if I was driving up that way, it would be on my right-hand side? On your left, I think, yeah. coming from Route 20. Oh, on my left. Okay, but yeah. See, you, you. I'm talking about coming from Brookfield Road. No, uh, coming right. from Brookfield Road up to Route 20. It's would be on, on your right, right, right hand side. Okay. Yeah. Right, right before Country Bank. Okay. Any comments from the board? No. See none. Thank you very much. Move on to our next item. Item number four is another site, site plan application, this one for Bay Path Regional Professional Technical High School. Ms. Graber? Yes, we received a copy of a site plan application from the planning board submitted by Kessel Booz Association Associates Incorporated on behalf of Bay Path Regional Vocational Technical High School requesting approval to amend a previously approved site plan permit to construct a new 31 space parking lot in front of high, the high school building southwest of the main entrance. Said property is zoned low density residential. You are asked to review and provide comments, if any, to the planning board no later than Wednesday, September 20th. Thank you, Ms. Creeper. And any comments from the board? I imagine that they follow all stormwater, you know, every yeah. time I see parking lots, it's like, oh, so much impervious surface area. Yeah. What do we do with it? So, seeing no comments, we'll move on to our next item. Item number five a special one day liquor license request. Karen Peters' wedding. Ms. Graber? Yes, sir. Attached is a request from Karen Peters for a special liquor license for wine and malt beverages to be used for a wedding on October 7th from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Barton Center Penta Dining Hall. This request has been forwarded and approved by the Building Commissioner, Fire Department, and Police Department. Per the Board's policy, the license, if the days requested are approved, should be issued for two additional days for the following reasons. October 6th, to allow the delivery of the alcohol to the establishment, no sales would be allowed. October 7th for sale on the appro approved date and time is listed. And October 8th to allow for pickup of any unused alcohol, no sales allowed. These dates would be reflected on the license. I would recommend the board approve the special license as requested. Thank you, Ms. Craver. What are the wishes of the board for this request? Through the chair. Mr. McGrath. I make a motion that we approve the um, one day special liquor license for October 7th, 2017 from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the Barton Center. Um, the liquor license to be for three days for October 6th, October 7th, and October 8th to uh, facilitate the uh, delivery and removal of the alcohol after the event. Thank you. We have a motion to accept the special license request, uh, uh, special license as, as requested. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 motion passes. Thank you. Item number six, the CMMPO Information and Member Selection Meeting. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. Central Massachusetts po Metropolitan Planning Organization is responsible for prioritizing how federal funds are sent to roads, bridges, and transit in the city of Worcester and the surrounding 39 towns. 
The CMMPO is comprised of locally elected officials as voted members, in addition to representatives from Mass DOT, Office of Transportation Planning, and District 3 Highway Divisions, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, and the Worcester Regional Transit Authority. Five member selectmen represent their respective sub-regions on the CMMPO, and the city manager represents the city of Worcester. Oxford selectman Dennis Lachar LaMarche currently represents the South West sub-region communities on the CMMPO with Dudley Selectman John Ruda serving as the alternate. However, their term expires at the end of September and community officials must now meet to select who will represent them for the next three years. In keeping with the member selection process, the, MS, the CMMPO staff is requesting that the board send a selectman to attend an information and member selection meeting at the Pearl Crawford <coughs> Memorial Library 40 Schofield Ave in Dudley on Thursday, September 21st at 6 p.m. The selectmen that attend this meeting will be asked to choose one selectman from among the group to represent our sub-regions communities on the CMMPO. They have asked for a response by September 18th with the name of the selectman that will attend. What is the board's wishes? Thank you, Ms. Kerber. What are the board's wishes? Any volunteers? Florida. No, I'm supposed to be in Florida. Mm -hmm. I'll be in New York. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Noble. It's my mother's birthday. I can't attend. Oh. I'm otherwise occupied that evening, so one of you will have to do it. You want to bring her with you? Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> no. Fun for the whole family. This is the 21st. I'll do it. Thank you. Can I have that as a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion that. Uh, the chairman attend the uh, CMMPO um, information and member selection meeting at, in Dudley on September 21st. Second. Thank you. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, motion, please say aye. 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 Chair, what's that? Motion passes. Thank you. Item number seven on a new business. That was a fun one. To set the trick or treat date and time, also arguably the most important one tonight's meeting. Ms. Craver? Yes, it's that time of the year when the board is asked to set the date and time for trick-or-treating. Chief Charette recommends that we celebrate trick-or-treating in the town of Charlton on Tuesday, October 31st from 5.30 to 7.30. I would rec recommend the board approve the date and time provided. I would also ask if you would consider closing the town hall at 5 p.m. so that employees may enjoy trick-or-treating with their children. The last time trick-or-treating was held on a Tuesday was October 31st and the board allowed the town Hall to close at 5 p.m. What is the board's wish? Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Singer. I would certainly move that we allow trick or treating from 5.30 in the morning until 7.30 <laughs> p.m. and close town hall at 5 p.m. so they can trick or treat too. Oh, you meant 5.30 p.m. Did um, I say differently? Yeah, I keep going back. When I was a kid, we just grabbed pillowcases and went out for hours, you know? Not 5.30 in the morning, but I would make it 5.30 p.m. as requested. I'll second that. Thank you. A motion and a second. Um, does that also include closing the town hall at 5 p.m.? Yes, it does. Yes. It is. And not yeah, 5 a.m.? Absolutely. absolutely. Did it's, I say it? You did not. I don't think no, so. No, no, no. David's just going back to his days when he was. When well, I was a kid, but I'm also saying you didn't specify p.m. Gotcha. So I'm taking liberty. <laughs> You're still on the sugar high from that, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's right. Good thing we have memorandums to help us. That's right. Awesome. We have a motion and a second to uh, declare trick or treating 5.30 p.m. to to 7.30 p.m. on October 31st uh, and to close the hall at 5 p.m. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I move to a vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion passes. Item number eight on a new business, Department Head Uniforms and Licenses. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. I'm requesting that the Highway Superintendent and um, Foreman be approved to receive the equivalent of the highway contract articles 14 for uniforms and 21 for licenses. As you know, management often takes a financial hit when leaving the union to take a management position. Yes, they are paid a higher salary, but often the salary is diminished by the benefits they earn as a union member coming out of their pocket. Presently, with the exception of the superintendent, Highway Department employees get their licenses paid and a clothing allowance. If approved, the Highway Superintendent would have parity with the rest of his department. 
Also, um, other Charlton Department's management receives the same benefits as the respected employees' contracts. This would bring the highway superintendent in line with the police and fire chiefs. Through the chair. Mr. McGrath. I make a motion that we uh, approve the request to uh, have the highway uh, superintendent be equivalent of the highway contract under Article 14 uniforms and uh, 21 on licenses. And Mark, second. and the foreman? And the foreman also. Thank you. Second. Thank you, motion. Second, discussion. Uh, ju just a, a quick note on this. The price for, for the licenses right now, the state about three or four years ago separated out all the hydraulics licenses um, into individual <laughs> tests. And the, they've, they've found a niche to uh, take more money out of somebody's pocket. Um, to the tune of sometimes three to four hundred each license for every endorsement. Some of these guys have to have four and five endorsements. Ms. Gregory, do you have an estimated cost of how much it would uh, impact the town? Yes, I had a conversation with um, Superintendent Foskett and he said less than five hundred between the clothing and that. So he doesn't yeah. need all of each those licenses. Or just no, for it would be each. What he does with his licenses is he has a company come in. Mm -hmm. And which is very, very smart. He has an outside company come in and they give all the tests to everybody hmm. right there. Mr. Singer? Yeah, just for the chief's benefit, when the town minister had mentioned achieving parity with that department head with the chief to get it, the initial suggestion from her was just to take yours away. <laughs> but we said no, <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be fair to you, so we'll just make him, you know, we'll give him what you have. I saw uniforms, I thought we were going to start having them like hot pink short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten the union to accept that yet. <laughs> mm. We have motion. It is on the list. <laughs> motion second on the floor. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Just, just makes sense. Old business. Right number one. Chief Sherrod. Come on down to talk about Route 20 traffic. I know we alluded to this earlier. So, good evening again. Good evening. And you're here to provide us an update on Route 20? Um, I, I wasn't sure how specific you wanted me to get when we had talked about this earlier. We had talked about accidents and some of the basic data we had. We had looked at last year. Uh, to date this year, we've had a uh, total of 270 accidents. And you've got to be a little careful when you say accident because uh, legally anything under $1,000 damage, nobody injured, you don't even have to report it to us. Uh, so these are just the crashes that are substantial enough that we go and fit that criteria. This out of those, year? Out of this year? 270 so far this year. From January or July? From first? January, yeah. Is this is just on Route 20 or no? Nope. This is calendar year for the entire town. Okay. Accidents so that fall under that. Well, it's, what, what strikes me is 82 of those were somewhere on the Route 20 corridor, somewhere intersecting, and it, it's hard to say if it happened exactly on Route 20 or at the intersection of Route 20. Um, what I've seen in looking at over the data and actually going over the individual accidents is the accidents that you do have are serious accidents. Um, probably twice what I've seen in different communities um, I, I still teach accident reconstruction. I still uh, have worked it year, for years. And, and modern vehicles, uh, the roadways we have, um, just are leading to much more dangerous accidents. You know, the streets we should be going 30, the cars are going 60. Um, so we are seeing serious, uh, serious crashes. Uh, year to date now, last year, at this time, we were about 240. So we're about 30 accidents ahead of last year at this time. You know, that can be something as simple as you had a couple of rainy weeks in August, and a lot of things can lead to that. So I caution not to read too much into the fact that we're a little bit ahead. Um, you know, a couple of, uh, uh, the superintendent just left, but a couple of uh, good snowstorms, and all of a sudden you, you've got a dozen more accidents than you had the year before. So, so that, that, that's not something I think you should focus too much on. But again, it falls right back to what we had talked about earlier. Uh, enforcement, uh, working with the state, working with the folks who've got backgrounds and helping us in every instance we can, looking carefully every time we get something from the planning board that there's a new development, 
looking at the intersections that lead to that. You know what, sometimes it's deceiving when you see a development of eight or 10 houses and you think, well, you know, eight or 10 cars. Well, that's not true in a modern family. It's probably two or three or more cars. It's then the oil trucks who deliver oil to the houses. It's the landscapers who go. There's a lot that goes into a development. You can't just say it's only five or six houses. And some of the developments we're getting are quite, quite a bit larger than that. So um, to cut to the chase, um, I suggest respectfully to the board that they consider uh, a type of a traffic commission. Uh, you can have a board member on that. You can make it completely civilian. I suggest that you have at least one or two of the police officers there. And it's a really good way to filter out all the requests that come in and then give you a quarterly update, you know, three or four or five times a year, whatever you feel is appropriate. And then when you have concerns, have people who address it. And then we had one of the uh, state uh, safety experts on our board, happened to live in Southbridge. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great way to do it. Bring in people who've got really good backgrounds and can help you with, the, with all of these things that come up. It's a great uh, way to uh, present different ideas and suggestions to the various boards, be it finance committee, our committee, highway, mm -hmm. about those various improvements. Uh, absolutely. And then when you have a question or, in, uh, you know, the citizens want to talk with somebody, they have a place to go. And it is very helpful because what we used to do is we would grab the blueprints of their neighborhood, of the roadway system they're talking about. Sometimes we would spend an entire meeting literally jumping in the cars and going to see it. it there's nothing better than that to, to really get the feel for what they need and their concerns. And sometimes it was relatively easy to fix. Sometimes we couldn't. Uh, but it, I, I found it was a really good way to address all of the building and, and the things that arise. Thank you. Mr. Singer? Uh, just two quick things. Would part of that be also our conversation earlier about, and, and maybe a caution to people who may watch or read about this conversation, when you're driving on that road, that you're driving on that road with today's technology and today's traffic levels on a road that was designed for 1950s, vehicles in 1950s traffic levels. So keep that in mind when you're flying down that road. And the, other, and the, other, and the question I had was, if you do that commission, like you have a, uh, is it the same officers for continuity purposes? Like we have one officer who handles explorers or a school resource officer. It's the same people. So they have continuity and know what's been going on or is it been ever changing whoever's on duty kind of well, thing? Well, no, no. Yeah, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting for the committee itself is that we would strictly advisory, a five or six person committee who would take in the input, take in the concerns. And then if the board had a question, the, the police department themselves, we work with the fire service and DPW a lot too because there's always some new intersection coming up, the poles that come up, the, 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 the developments, they're moving something. All of those things come into play. And what's really nice is they keep an eye. They, they're kind of a good watchdog, too, for development. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's uh, a couple of new businesses adjacent to Route 20 that really changed a couple of the dynamics. <laughs> and that would have been really good to look at. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just a good wake-up call that, it, you know, you've got that water uh, job coming up to it. It's going to be massive. Uh, my, my sense tells me that once that water is in place, I think you're going to get a lot of requests for building. And it, it would give you a, a good in, and it would give you a very good contact within the state agencies that, that can help you with those uh, kind of questions. Mr. Swenson? I would make a motion that the board direct the town administrator to work with the Chief Charette to come up with a draft proposal for a civilian traffic commission. Traffic advisory committee? Traffic advisory committee. Second. CTAC. Um, <laughs> how would you phrase that again? I, I, all I'm doing is asking the board to direct the town administrator to so work with the police chief to, to come up with a proposal, draft proposal for the formation of this committee. Okay. That we can then look at the formation of it, how it would be constituted, and tweak it and figure out where we go with it from there. To the chair, I have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Um, I second it. We have a second discussion. Ms. Noble? I, I believe the phrase that the chief used when he first discussed this earlier this evening was a civilian traffic commission. I, I, I'm not that concerned. If, if that's the proper name, then that's fine. I'll do that. I just say if, if you take the word advisory out of it, it makes a big difference. Then I would, I would amend the motion to the Civilian Traffic Commission. Commission. I'll amend my second. Thank you. Motion and second. 
I think they serve the same purpose. Well, once you add the word advisory in there, you may give them more weight, more in, in decision making. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the idea of having a civilian traffic commission, particularly in light of the fact that Charlton is growing. There are a lot of changes. This is part of smart growth. But maybe we don't put advisory in their name. Fair enough. I, I did want to, yeah, I, I, I did it on purpose to stress that this is simply advisory. I didn't want anybody listening out there to think that, hey, they're going to have this traffic commission. They're going to start telling everybody what. No. Mm -hmm. It's just to gather information for the board and to help filter, you know, uh, out of the 50 complaints, what, what should you look at and what really needs to be addressed. Also to be proactive as well. Absolutely. So, I, I just. I think, you know, as long as I've been in town, as long as I've been involved, I've heard, you know, the, the biggest thing that we need in this town is commercial development along Route 20. This may start coming up to be, uh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think, I don't know that anyone anticipated, uh, you know, necessarily the, a realistic traffic impact that, that really developing Route 20 uh, could have. I agree. I think we and, and wished for it, but we didn't be uh, proactive about doing <laughs> Well, we, we didn't at least didn't realize all the implications of it. I think, too, you've got that bear on your back with the Interchange 9 and Sturbridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And until that they figure out a way to separate the intersection of Route 84 and the Exit 9, it's, yeah. it, you're, yeah. you're the overflow. Yeah. No, I just, I, again, I'm going to go back to, this is all about smart growth to piggyback on, on what you were saying, Rick. Oh, yeah, Careful absolutely. what you wish for. We now have the growth, but we have to have smart growth. And I don't think we'll have any shortage of civilians that want to be on this commission. I think that we will have an overflow of people that want to have input. Absolutely. Mr. Singer? I was just going to say that uh, some growing pains are worth the long-term uh, payoff. Mm -hmm. Mr. McGrath? Through, through the chair, um, Chief, the, what percentage of the accidents were, were during the day or the travel time, drive times? Just Can, rough. My, my sincere apologies. I, I don't want to give you bad data. I can get that, and I'll get it to Ms. Craver for you. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm sorry I don't have the time of day. Only, only because it leads me to an, another, another question. I know other departments have one officer specifically that all they do is tra is is basically um, radar, you know, traffic enforcement. Um, Albert has an entire division just for traffic. Well, they, 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 I, they were one that I w was alluding to, and they're, they're very proactive, especially during the, what we call the drive times. Um, I mean, in, in, in trouble spots, over 20 as you're coming up, uh, as you go down by 290 and you come up the hill to, uh, to Fuller's, you know, that's, they've had tremendous accidents up there, and, and you know, they write a lot of tickets there. Uh, that might be something for the, the new chief to, ne <laughs> to think about. I, I've already put in a writing form. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. And Look forward to seeing that draft, Ms. Baber. Thank you, and thank you, Chief, for bringing that forward to us. Thanks. Item number two on your business is our Board of Selectmen goals and objectives. Ms. Craver? Yes, sir. At the last board's last meeting, you reviewed your 18, FY18 goals and objectives and made changes. They've been updated as requested. Uh, have you all had a chance to take a look at this? Yeah. Uh, it, it's some, some good stuff that we have been working on. Uh, we've all right. Got done today. I could throw yes. one thing out. I was going to throw it in at the end, unknown at the time of posting, but it actually fits with one of the items on this list. Uh, is it item number one? Yes, it is. Um, the employee luncheon. I mentioned this to Mary and to Robin. Um, I think it would be a good idea going forward to just simply have it come out of the selectmen's fund. Um, it is, I think, unfair to Mary and be easier for her to not have to be chasing everybody around to get money if they would simply just take it out of the this fund, which we have, to pay for the pizza. It's one purchase, it's one reimbursement. Instead of her waiting to get money from everybody and even everybody trying to check people down, it, we have a selectman's account. And I think that would easily be able to cover this without Mary having to chase everybody down to get money every year. I agree, but also I also think it means a lot when we actually pay money 
and you know treat our employees. I think if we pay the money out of the selectman's account, we're treating the employees no matter what. I don't think they're five-year-olds. I think they appreciate the fact that we do it. Whether you take the 20 out of your pocket or the selectman's account, the fact that you do it is showing them that you want to have this luncheon for them. But at the same time, we should make it easier on the people who are doing the actual work of collecting the money, making the order, going shopping. And I just think it's well, easier also, we're suggesting maybe just putting the money in right away, just taking that onus on ourselves and being more accountable. To, to the chair. If you're not working Southern Connecticut, that's easier to do. I would, I would, uh, I would agree with you, Joe. I think that it's the burden is on us to come forward and uh, and show our employees that we care about them, show the town hall that we care, and since we're all here at least once a week anyway to sign warrants and payroll and sympathy cards, it's not that difficult to take a few dollars out of our pocket and throw it in an envelope. I understand that, you know, I'm right here in town and it's easier for me to get here, but I have, you know, at time been on the road a lot, but I would still come here and do it because it means that much to them for us to make that effort. And that's fine, and whoever the board wants to do it, but again, I would say I think the appreciation is the fact that we do it, not whether you pay for it yourself. And I understand. And, you know, we'll give the 20. We'll continue to give the 20. I couldn't come Friday. I couldn't come Thursday. I couldn't come Wednesday. I work an hour and 15 minutes away. I have to race back here in order to drop that off. So next time I'll just do the month in advance. But the point is, and I disagree, I don't think the employees care who pays for it. They care that you think about them and you have it. And I talked to Mary, and she actually agreed that she thought it would be easier for her to simply be able to take it from the selectman's fund. Well, I'm all for doing things that make it easier on Mary, that's for sure, because she works hard enough. Absolutely. Mr. Swanson? I found one thing that's uh, absent from the revised goals and objectives. What's that? I think we voted last time that we were going to ask the town administrator to work with the cable TV on developing her uh, television I it was show. There. It's my it's goal. It's there. I didn't, I actually, I didn't even slip. think to add it into your goals. Oh, I yeah. thought you had given it to me. I would be glad to add it as a goal. <laughs> but it wasn't a bo board sure of selectmen goal. I thought it was a town she administrator goal. Sure no, I think yeah. Rick wants to be on it also. I would also, yeah, I'd yes. a motion to Rick to be a co host. <laughs> And, and to write the script and to... And to oh, I'd love to write the script. <laughs> I'll take that one in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm charged with music. <laughs> It'll be a Busby Berkeley movie. So a lot of these are ongoing, like, you know, uh, the whole t town website and whatnot, you know, something we will be working on. Mm -hmm. And we are currently working on. So we're doing a good job, guys. Keep it up. All right, any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, we'll uh, now move on to item number three under old business, special town meeting, uh, October 16th. Ms. Kramer? Okay. Guess if I think it, I don't put it in writing, then it doesn't exist. That's exactly <laughs> right. Also, I have to um, exactly right. comment that, you know, I miss the iPads. <laughs> this is happy it's mountain of paperwork. Yes. Yes, okay. So um, what you have in front of you is a list for your warrant articles. Tonight you are scheduled to close the warrant, and in two weeks you are scheduled to approve the warrant articles. Um, this is the first time I've had so many placeholders. Um, in the last, I'd say, 48 hours, I've probably had over half of these um, added. So at this point, many of the, the articles do not have language, um, and hopefully we'll be able to get all of that together um, before two weeks. You have to approve it. So um, let me just go through them. They're in no particular order at this point. Um, the first three are general house housekeeping that we have at every um, special town meeting, the appropriation of funds for unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year if needed, um, intra-departmental intra transfers and appropriations for FY18 budget, which is this year's budget, 
capital items and related contracts. Land purchase, um, the next two are requests for a placeholder from the Public Safety Building Committee. Um, one is for a land purchase for a public safety building, it's the Guy property, and uh, funding to design a public safety building placeholder from the Public Safety Building Committee. Um, and they're still, they're going to be meeting this week? Thursday. Next, Thursday. And hopefully we'll finalize exactly what those will look like. Um, transfer to and from stabilization funds, that is a standard housekeeping article that we keep on. Um, the police chief asked for the acceptance of Mass General Law Chapter 213 of the Acts of 1989, subsections B through K, inclusive and titled an act authorizing cities and towns to penalize those who abandon motor vehicles. Amending section 10-2 of the Charlton bylaws. The chief is here if you have questions on that. No? Mm -hmm. You can go home. <laughs> Thank you very much. The personnel bylaw amendment, I received an email today from Debbie Ciccarini from the assessor's office asking to put the longevity um, bylaw back on. Mm -hmm. um, South Charlton Dam Repair has been requested by Todd Gerard, um, and it's $750,000. Do we, do That's we a placeholder. That, yeah. Yes, yeah. we do. We do. It's my understanding we do. Proposal for increasing stipends for elected officials, a placeholder that was given to us a while ago that I had put in the folder. It came from the Board of Assessors, um, Dick Vaughn, making that request. You do have doc, um, the backup documentation. You have his request in there. So for boards and commissions who meet two or more times a month, um, the total stipend co compensation would be 3,200 for the chair and 3,000 for the member. Um, who meet less than two times per month, 2,500 for the chair and 2,400 for the members. Consideration should be given to a one-time stipend not to exceed 300 to um, each be given this fiscal year if department has unspent funds available. Um, sewer bylaw, so you have three things from the water sewer. One of them is a amendment, and I have no, no language yet. I did attend their meeting last night, and they asked me to put these placeholders on. Um, so one is for an exemption from zoning for sewer and, uh, and water infrastructure. There's a placeholder for the Water Sewer Commission water um, bylaw amendment regarding meter use and installation, and a placeholder for drain layers license. They'd like to make a change there. Um, you also have an acceptance of Blackwell Drive. That's a placeholder. We're not sure if that's going to be completed. If it's completed, it'll stay on in two weeks. Um, the zoning map revision is from the planning board for Belcher property uh, zoning map. I also received an article um, request from the Board of Assessors asking to be able to, um, the article says, whereas the town of Charlton, its Board of Assessors wish to properly classify an employee where assigned to the Board of Assessors in light of significant responsibilities, contributions, and tenure of employment, the assistant assessor position shall be a member of the United Professional Alliance of Charlton. The position of assistant assessor shall be employed by the town's Board of Assessors. The Board of Assessors shall retain the discretion to appoint their staff employee to the position of assistant <coughs> assessor. This has the written approval within a memorandum of understanding between the United Professional Alliance of Charlton and the Board of Assessors, and that's sponsored by the Board of Assessors. I did respond back to um, the director that I forwarded this to town council for review of its legality at this point. Not only that, could we please ask the personnel board to weigh in? Also, yeah. please. Yes. And, you know, through, excuse me, Joe, through the chair. No, that's a good question. I think it's something we also took a look at when we did our classification plan. Yeah, this has been not, going on for years. Not, not only that, well, not only that, but there is a proper procedure to do this, and I believe the the proper procedure is human resources, the um, personnel board, and then we we move on from there. That, mm -hmm. Plus, plus bargaining, I imagine that would have some impact as well. Well, th this is the first time it's come up while we've had an HR director, so I'd be curious.
speakers to get mm -hmm. input from there or get the perspective from a true yeah. HR. It also, especially with the new director, like you said, Mr. Swenson is you know, setting precedent and uh, a set of policies. Uh, so what for tonight, these are our articles and placeholders. Uh, next week, could we, well, let's say we didn't want one of these to say, I don't know, to and from stabilization, just for an example. We could uh, uh, take that off the, uh, the warrant for town meeting. Yes, if there's any that what you're doing is you're going to close the warrant tonight, you can um, have all of these as placeholders and whatever placed on the warrant um, pending that everything is correct or if there's something else that you find that there's something um, illegal or something that mm -hmm. doesn't work that you don't mm -hmm. want to support and go forward, right. um, you can do that. Mr. Swanson? I move that we close the warrant. Second. Thank you. A motion and a second to close the warrant. Discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, good. Uh, suddenly a, a quiet town meeting suddenly <laughs> blew up. So it should be interesting. Seeing no discussion, we'll move to a vote to close the warrant. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So it's aye. Motion passes. The warrant is now closed. Ms. Graber, uh, review capital items and the finance committee. Yes, sir. Which is under uh, the special time meeting. Um, I do not have that for you at this point because we do not have free cash certified. So I will be doing that. That will be under the motions with the warrant article. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Okay. Any, other, not ready yet. any other questions, comments, concerns about special town meeting? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, committee reports. Any committee reports? Nope. Seeing none, we'll move to the town administrator's report. Ms. Graber? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a two-pager. <laughs> police assessment. The police assessment was completed August 29th and was attended by the lieutenant and four sergeants. The scores have been sent to the Human Resources Division of Civil Service and we are waiting on the list. Once we receive the ranking, you will be able to choose the chief from the top three ranked candidates. After confirming with the chair, we will reserve space on your September 26th regular meeting for interviews. I plan on working with the HR to come up with four or five questions you can ask each candidate since you will be looking for the best fit. School, school finance report. As you know, Charlton contacted, contracted with Mark Abrams to review the financial picture in the school district and the town. You've been invited to attend a joint financial planning meeting for um, FY19 at the Shepherd Hill Regional High School Library on Tuesday, September 19th at 6 p.m. to meet with the Dudley Charlton Regional School Committee and members of the Dudley Selectmen and Finance Committee. State Senators Ann Goby, and Ryan Fatman, as well as representatives Peter Durant and Paul Frost have also been invited. This meeting has been posted for the board and the finance committee. I uh, highly recommend being there for that one. Be there. Mm -hmm. um, and I do intend on making sure you get the report before the end of the week. Thank you. So you'll have a chance to look at it ahead of time. MMA's legislative breakfasts, the Massachusetts Municipal Association's fall Friday morning legislative breakfasts have been scheduled in the cities and towns across the Commonwealth. These meetings allow you to be part of a lively discussion with legislators and MMA staff about the state and local government in Massachusetts and important legislative and budget priorities for the year. The closest meeting for the board to attend is on September 29th at the Auburn Town Hall. <coughs> Registration is required by September 22nd. If you would like the office to register, would you please let us know. Smart Shopper. About a year ago, we gave the Smart Shopper permission to make an informational booklet similar to the one we created about eight years ago. A representative from Smart Shopper, Megan Walker, was working on the booklet and selling advertisements to Charlton businesses. She brought and left us a mock-up for us to um, update and correct several months ago, which we noted problems. There was information, photos, and data that needed to be updated. We did not give any go-ahead or okay to print. A few weeks ago, a business owner brought an ad, um, who bought an ad came into the office and asked if it had come out yet because the check he wrote was cashed a while back. I called Smart Chopper and they informed us that Megan no longer worked for the company, but told them that it was all set. They said the booklet was being printed as we spoke. I told them it was never approved and to stop printing because there were errors. I asked them why we did not receive a final copy to review as is customary before printing. I was told that that was their mistake and they should have. 
I was assured it wouldn't go to print. We agreed that staff would review the final copy before printing. Last week, a citizen came in the office and asked if we saw the Charlton booklet. He said it came in with his newspaper. It was the unfinished booklet with errors, including only showing four of the five selectmen. I am beyond disappointed in the smart shopper's decision to mail the booklet after promising not to. I will be recommending that all, all the advertisers be returned their money. What other action can you take? Call I the have, AG. I have forwarded this to um, Cosgrove to have a conversation with him. Um, I also ha have an intention. I wanted to, you know, let you know what was happening with this. But I also would like to call the Better Business Bureau. And if you could, the AG. This to me is someone who not only swindled the town, but is swindling the town's business owners. Mm. And I think the attorney general deserves a call. They're taking their money for a product that was not. There's just, just so many things we could bring up about this. Yeah, and that's just one error out of a lot of errors. Mm -hmm. I, I know about it when it happened. Yeah, it's like, well, Clearly, they knew. Yeah. They <laughs> knew before they mailed it that yeah. it was incorrect. See the copy. Copy of what? Of this. Um, they actually tried to drop them off to us as if nothing happened, and we turned around the next day and returned all the copies and said we did not approve this and we're not accepting it. So they kept one. Just I have one. Cool. Oh, give it to Cope on the page. I have one. Okay. Good job. Showed up in my newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything. Mass DEP drinking water program. We have received notification from Mass DEP, DEP that they are in receipt of the permit application for the installation of 7.8 miles of the new 8 inch water main and two new pump stations. The water mains are being installed as part of the remediation project associated with ExxonMobil. The permit application was filed by Kleinfelder Consultants on behalf of ExxonMobil for construction of the water main in the town of Charlton. Mass DEP received the permit application on July 11th which included a description of the project, a set of plans, and specifications. The submittal for the entire project consists in two parts. The current submittal is part one, and the second submittal will be submitted under a separate cover, which will include details on the booster pump stations. Mass DEP has, based on the engineer certification and signature, um, is of the opinion that the proposal has been designed in accordance with modern waterworks engineering principles and practices and thereby approved the proposed water main project in Charlton. Oh, good. Um, NEC future tier one record of decision. The Federal Railroad Administration released the record of decision for NEC future. The FRA's comprehensive plan for improvements to the Northeast Corridor rail line from Washington, D.C. to Boston. Improving infrastructure between Washington and New Haven, Connecticut and between Providence, Rhode Island and Boston as needed. This will not affect Charlton at all. This is based on, um, based on improving and fixing what's already in place. Information is in your read folder uh, if you want to review it. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Graber. Is there any questions for the town administrator? A lot of good stuff there. I'd like to keep, uh, make sure to uh, keep up to date with the um, uh, Smart Shopper saga. Yes, sir. See what transpires. All right. Uh, is there any other business that was unknown at the time of posting? No? All right. Then uh, our next meeting will be September 26th. That's our regular meeting. But before that, will be a joint financial planning meeting uh, September 19th. So please be there if you can. That's going to be a very important meeting. And with that, uh, what is the board's wishes of going into executive session? Through the chair. Mr. McGrath. I make motion that we enter an executive session under Mass General Law. Chapter 30A, Section 21, Number 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if the open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body regarding clerical union, highway union, Selfridge landfill litigation, IMA, Casella zoning appeal, and number six, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate, Exxon Waterline, pump station, land purchase. If the chair declares an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiations, negotiating position of the public body. Thank you. We have a motion to give a second. Second. Motion and second. The chair does declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiation position of the public body. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll go by roll call vote. 
Mr. McGrath. Aye. Ms. Noble. Aye. Mr. Swenson. Aye. Mr. Singer. Aye. Chair votes aye. We're now in executive session at 9.23 p.m. We'll be exiting executive session solely for the purpose of adjournment. Our next regular meeting will be September 26th, and September 19th will be a joint financial planning meeting. Have a great night. <laughs>